biggest bad boy of podcasting is an entertainment-based wrestling program. The opinion share are that of the host and their guest. Some celebrity voices are impersonated and usually not well. This program is not intended for kids and certain adults. Listener's discretion is advised. You have been warned. Now let's get ready to podcast. Yo, 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 yo. Check it out, everybody. It's your host, Mr. DJ Impact. Big show tonight. United We Stand. Pay per view went down. The G1 Supercard went down. Hall of Fame went down. And something called uh, WrestleMania went down let me introduce to you the hosts i'm sorry the bad boys simon street what's up what up everybody king lucky how are you are you ready i said are you ready matt michaels how are you Hey guys, I'm still uh, outside of the uh, MetLife Stadium waiting for my Uber. Uh, I should be back in about two days. <laughs> Pretty much. I am also excited because we have a new member of Vegas Bad Boys of Podcasting. It's exciting because this guy knows a lot. It's going to keep us all in check. We think we've been knowing things. We don't know nothing, man. This guy does. Sin City Steve, welcome to the Vegas Bad Boy of Podcasting. How are you? Oh, man. It's it's awesome to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so humble, right? Man. A lot going on this weekend. We have a lot to talk about, so we're going to get right into it. Uniting We Stand, uh, pay-per-view from Impact Wrestling. I guessed Simon Street, you uh, got a chance to check that out. Tell us what you, you think about it, and we're going to get in this. Well, I got an opportunity to watch uh, Impact Presents, United We Stand. There were also other promotions that were involved as well, mm -hmm. such as New Japan, not Japan Pro, the Lucha Underground. <laughs> I wish they were involved. Right. Um, real good show. Um, it had some, some solid book in, I would say. Um, I'm going to quickly do a rundown of a couple of uh, the highlights of the matches. Okay. Uh, the first one started off as an Ultimate X uh, type of match, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, if you are not familiar with that and you don't watch Impact Wrestling, it is where you usually have a title or briefcase or just anything suspended above the ring mm. along two ropes and a constructed post on each of the ring posts, so therefore it's a lot taller. I'm going to get back to you on why I said that. Okay. So anyways, the first match was Jake Chris versus Johnny Impact versus Dante Fox versus Pat Buck and uh, Ace Austin. Good. Now, this match was truly, truly a traditional Ultimate X match. It was really great. High, uh, you know, type of move set from everybody. Mm -hmm. My favorite part right now was, as you know, uh, Ace Austin is coming up in the game, Impact. He's making a name for himself. And let me tell you, when you have somebody that climbs up on the top of the scaffold of the Ultimate X setup, it is double the height of the ring post. Mm. And as he went up to the top, he did a, what I'd like to call, oh, my God, down off the top, scary as shit. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what this man did. But anyways. Did he, he die? I thought he was going to die, but okay. he didn't die. He's still but alive. did you die? Okay. I, he almost died. Um, <laughs> but in a, not a surprise for me, but maybe for other people, the winner of that match was Johnny Impact. And now ah. he, as the champion, has an opportunity to challenge for the Impact Division X Championship. Why not? So, next match that came up was Team Lucha Underground versus Team Impact. For Team Impact, you had Moose, Eddie Edwards, mm -hmm. Brian Cage, and Tommy Dreamer, who took the spot of Johnny Impact in the beginning. Uh, for the Team Lucha Underground, we had Marty the Moth, Drago, 
Donga and Arrow Star. The match was pretty interesting, but the only problem is, is Moose decided he had enough of Team Impact and decided to turn on his brethren, thus allowing Lucha Underground to win over Team Impact. Mm, Next mm, match, mm. Is we had the Knockouts title uh, up for grabs of Fatal 4-Way, and we had Taya Valkyrie uh-huh. versus Rosemary versus Jordan Grace okay. versus Grace. Katie Forbes. All right, who won that? I will tell you, the winner of that was Taya Valkyrie. No big surprise. I will say a highlight was was that Forbes actually held her own, and she was quite impressive. She okay. did. Boom. Yeah. Next match was a fan favorite. Okay. You had LAX versus Promociones Dorado, which you don't know is Low Key and Martinez. Actually, a good match. I'm not familiar with some of them. Uh, I am familiar with Low Key, and it was actually a good match. Uh, as you can tell, winner of that was LAX. Next match after that was a fun one, especially for people that want to buy curiously live through this gentleman. It was Tessa Blanchard versus Joey Ryan. <laughs> That's what I want to and know. And ladies, who in, curiously live. Well, curiously. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. When the whole crowd yells out, touch the dick, how many guys wish they were Joey Ryan and that they were going to get their junk touched by okay. Tessa Blanchard? I guess he's got a point so, there, right? I'm just but saying. That doesn't have anything to do with buy. Oh. Oh my god. That's gosh. like a dude wanting their t- dick touched by a chick. Ah. Basically, <laughs> if you're saying bi. I said bi curiously, not bisexual. <laughs> what the fuck is the difference? Bi curious. Bi curious bi- means you live you live through somebody else's experience, it's man. Bi curious. Oh, well, maybe it was bi curious. <laughs> I know you want to touch oh, Joey Ryan's that? big dick. Shit. Freud party at once. I guess yeah, so. Seriously. <laughs> Shit. Fuck my bad. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> The winner of that match was Tessa oh, Blanchard. Okay. Fucking destroyed Ryan. <laughs> that was actually a very good match. It was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, good. I really enjoyed that match. I would tell you right now, Tessa Blanchard is probably one of the top female wrestlers right now. There's, I'm going to say I don't give a shit what nobody else says. Without question. I agree so, with that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next match was uh, Sammy Callahan versus Jimmy Havoc in a Monsters Ball match. Pretty much this match was exactly what you expected. Blood. Just weapons of mass destruction. You had bats. You had staples. Mm. You had blood exchanges. The only thing that was not in that ring was Jesus Christ himself because he was not present for mm. the violence that happened. Wow. And the winner of that match, as you could probably tell, ended up being Sammy Callahan, who delivered the plow driver on the steel chair. Okay. And the main event. Oh, good. The main, oh, you, you, was getting, you was getting tired of me talking. No, no, no. Is, is no. that what it was? Not is at all. No, no, no. Don't worry. We're all we're all vicariously living for you. <laughs> vicariously. Yeah. Okay. All right. So anyways, the main event, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. was the whole fucking show, RVD, with the homicidal, suicidal, genocidal, Sabu versus the Lucha Brothers. Really good match. Um, I felt like, you know, uh, RVD, uh, I wouldn't say kind of coming back, but because he's been doing matches before. It was really well done. Sabu was on point. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't enough to beat the uh, the tag team of the Lucha Brothers. And, uh, you know, Lucha Brothers come out on top. And that pretty much was the show. Uh, I en- I enjoyed the show. I thought it was great how all those promotions came together. That's yeah. it for me. I'll awesome. shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, there we go. I, you did a good job. Is it because I finished? No, 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 no. <laughs> not, not because my ex-wife used to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's go right into it. Uh, the G1 Supercar was also in... New York City. Live from Madison Square Garden. Where, of course, King Lucky and I were, were at this weekend. And it was yep. it was amazing how many Sin City Steve fans were walking, asking me, because, of, of course, I must look like a New Yorker, where is Madison, Madison Square Garden? Where is it? And so I just said, uh, I think it's up that way. <laughs> but, you know, but... I said, look, you, you know, follow everyone with the uh, 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 the same shirts on. You know, I'm, I'm sure they're all going the same way. Follow the New Japan shirts. Exactly. Sure. 
you know basically so, so i think they made it there and um and it was awesome what do you think of the the show overall man uh overall the the g1 was actually a really good show um it was a really long show okay. um five hours plus yes. Ooh. um but nonetheless i mean you had well they shouldn't have had the women's battle royal and then they should have got rid of the 205 match. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Well played. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, it, 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 was, it was a really good show all around. Uh, there was a little something for everybody on that show. Um, right out of the gate, I mean, you had the Honor Rumble, uh, which ended up being won by Las Vegas' own Kenny King. Yes. You got, no, no. You got to say it right. K-I-N-G King. There you go. <laughs> No doubt. Um, always want to do that. Who uh, and, and I will always appreciate some good heel tactics. Mm-hmm. Uh, the man slid out underneath the bottom rope okay. in the middle of the match, and right when everyone thought that you know the match was over, in in slides Kenny King, and he throws both Jushin Thunder Liger and the Great Muda, Muda. Yep. over the top to win the thing. Mm-hmm. Which was awesome. So I yeah. so I, basically when he got out of the ring, he uh, went back to 1987. Essentially, yeah. Basically, basically, slid back basically in. Basically yes, yeah. it's the DeLorean under there, right? Right. So uh, yeah, uh, definitely a good job on on that with uh, the honor rumble victory for Kenny King. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had uh, title versus title. Okay. Uh, the ROH World Television Champion Jeff Cobb. Defeating the never open weight champion Will Ospreay mm. and leaves with both title belts, which nice. became a theme for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Basically, that match was amazing. Oh, it, it, going into it, I was—I'll be honest—I was somewhat unsure, um, just because the two guys had differing styles. But I think that that worked actually in their favor, and uh, both men absolutely killed it. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff Cobb doing what he does best, throwing dudes around. Pretty much. Will Ospreay just defying gravity. And, but can and, you can you explain uh, to me what uh, exactly is a never open weight? <laughs> it, <laughs> um, no, so you can't. <laughs> you, 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 yeah, you can't. But um, the the thing is, uh, with a lot of the titles in New Japan. Uh, you've got weight restrictions. I mean, they have junior tag division. They have the the heavyweight tag division. So, uh, literally anybody could win this title. So it was awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, Jeff Cobb wins after uh, a tour of the islands. Um, really, really well done there. Uh, from there, we had Roosh defeating Dalton Roosh. Castle. Yes, I can't roll my R's, so I'm not. I don't. I don't, I don't even try. Roosh. Thank you. <laughs> um, in basically a glorified squash match. Um, yeah. And then after the match, you had Dalton Castle turning on the boys, which I can definitely what? say yeah. Yeah. was a very, very welcome move. It was child yeah. abuse that was welcomed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It'll be interesting to see where they go with that. I'm, I'm really, Court. Yeah. I'm, Court. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really interested to see because – um, Dalton Castle, uh, obviously he held the, the ROH heavyweight championship for a while and, uh, then just kind of got stagnant. Yeah. And, uh, so now hopefully after the heel turn, I think that he's going to be able to reinvent himself. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, he'll definitely prosper for sure. Okay. Um, so there, um, from there we had the women of honor world title match as Kelly Klein defeated the champion Mayu Iwatani, oh, okay. uh, to win the championship back. Um, in a match that was, it, it, it was very challenging. Uh, the crowd was not into this match whatsoever wow. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that this match really suffered as a result. Uh, both ladies were, were busting their asses trying to get the crowd into it, yeah. but it just didn't click. Wow. Um, Even so the finish was a bit motion emotional. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and, and you know, after the match, uh, you know, you had Kelly Klein almost uh, doing a, a little bit of a baby face kind of a turn. Um, and then uh, <laughs> you had Velvet Sky. Yep. Ah. Yes. Yes. And uh, and Angelina Love mm-hmm. showing up 
in Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. And wow, very interesting. So they're bringing the beautiful people to but ROH. is it called the beautiful people? No, it no. is not. <laughs> as, as, as we were going to find out. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Ring of Honor mainstay Mandy Leone mm-hmm. made her way down to ringside as well. Okay. And uh, they all three proceeded to beat down Kelly Klein. Oh. And they... Uh, they drew a uh, an anarchy symbol, uh, what looked to be an anarchy symbol, in Kelly Klein's forehead. Okay. Um, which is the evidently the new logo for the new faction, Allure. Allure. Oh, Allure. Okay. Yeah. So so sexy. Sexy. Until you in, until you get a foot shoved in your ass. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So okay. so yeah, that was uh, that was definitely interesting. Um, from there, we had the New York City street fight, okay. which was originally supposed to be a one-on-one encounter with um, with Bully Ray. Okay. And um, long story short, we ended up having a six-man come out of, of this. So it ended up being Flip Gordon, uh, Juice Robinson, and Mark Haskins uh, defeating Bully Ray, Silas Young, and Shane Taylor mm. in a six-man uh, New York City street fight tag match. And also, too, it was it just me, or did all that time off that Flip went through, he went from a boy body to a man's body. Dude. <laughs> Super Flip. jacked. He's Flip. been working out. <laughs> Flip came back, and he, dude, seriously. He, he looked like he was back in the service again. Oh, he, 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 probably, he probably didn't leave the gym. Wow. The entire time that he was gone, he probably had a cot in the back. And he probably just... You know, did his thing. Yeah. In the gym. So um so that was really cool. Uh the IWGP junior heavyweight title match. Uh we had uh, it in my opinion, this was uh, the show stealer okay. of the night. Yeah. Uh you had Dragon Lee defeating Bandito mm. and the former champion Taiji Ishimori mm. to win the championship. Um Dragon Lee is is amazing. Uh Bandito is unbelievable. Un- ungodly. And wow. and Ishimori is is no slouch in his own right. Um, so this match, they they pushed it to the limit the entire time, and um, I I definitely foresee Dragon Lee holding the title. Okay. Until we uh, get Hiromu back, mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, if we see Hiromu come back from the uh, from the neck injury, and uh, keep in mind he got his neck broken. In a match against Dragon Lee, yeah, Perfect. so wow. it all yeah. comes full circle. Yep. Yeah, and awesome. uh, and they're saying that he actually will be clear very soon. So okay, um, so then you had the uh, title versus title four way tag match: the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, the Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga and Tangaloa, with Ghetto. Uh, they defeated the ROH World Tag Team Champions, PCO and Brody King, Villain Enterprises. Uh, as well as Evil and Sonata from Los Ingobernables, uh, and Jay and Mark Briscoe to leave with the tag titles. Oh, okay. Um, this nice. match, I, yeah. I, I went into it with not, not the greatest expectation in the world, yeah. um, but it, these four teams really put it out there, and they did what they do best. You had the Gorillas of Destiny walking away with both, stri- both sets of the tag titles, um, and you had PCO just bumping like a boss, like and doing moves that you wouldn't even believe. He actually, yeah. actually, he got to pull off that move he does at the top rope. Yes. Uh, what's he called it? Oh my gosh, I thought the dude was gonna die, but every time I see PCO, <laughs> I think he's gonna die. Right. It pretty much. He he is undead. He is point. very much undead. He, I mean, they electrically shocked him in an electric chair at the beginning. How yeah, many times? Yeah, they like that, four times. That's how the guy came to the ring. <laughs> he came to the ring. With an electric chair. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty dope, though. So, I like that. It, it was legit. Yeah. And, and also, too, I think during the time at the end of the match, there was some bit of commotion. You know, uh, you know, uh, some, some guys seemed to have caused an altercation. You know, um, I don't know. You know, uh, you know oh, those guys. Those yeah. What guys. are those guys called? The, um, uh, oh, yeah. Um, what yeah. are they called? I, th- I think they were the, the realest guys in the room. I think they were the realest guys in the room, but they were the first one out, right? Hey, how right? you doing? Wow. Yeah. How you yeah. doing? Now, now, this is the part where, you know, King of Smarkville would say, <clears throat> Rumor has it that they're signed to ROH. I love it. 
Hey, how you doing? Came in the smocks, eh? You know what I'm saying? So came back with a New York accent, eh? <laughs> so basically, the fuck out of here. So, <laughs> so what, long story short, Toriano uh, played up this big, this big angle, like, haha, I grabbed the title belts and was on the entrance ramp with the title belts. Mm -hmm. And then while he was doing that and basically distracting the audience, you had Enzo and Big Cass mm -hmm. jump the guardrail and proceed to throw hands with Bully Ray, mm -hmm. among Are you serious? others. Yeah. 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 And now here's the thing. I I have no problems siding with the mayor of Smarksville over here. Right. <laughs> because if you if you look at any of the footage from this, the effort put forth by the security to either subdue or hold back Enzo and Cass was piss poor. Worse than the WWE? Oh, oh <laughs> without a doubt, man. So, wow. Yeah, without a doubt. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was one of those things where I do believe that Ring of Honor has signed Enzo and Cass uh, to their roster. Hmm. It's actually a good move, in my opinion. I like... I liked Enzo. I liked uh, Big Cass when they were together. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a good move if that is, in fact, what they've done. Yeah. Um, it'll help strengthen a few things. And, I mean, it'll jump sell start. a whole lot of merchandise. Oh, without right. a doubt. Yeah. And and keep in mind, too, you know, the Ring of Honor roster has been really depleted over the last year with the exodus, the mass exodus of Eight. talent to AEW. Right. So yeah. it's it's one of those things where... Yeah, let them get some star power. Um, the from from everything that has been online um, is that they were in fact signed. The booking team um, and everyone except for the higher ups within ROH were not fans of the acquisition. Mm. But uh, we see what happens, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens from here for sure. Yeah. Um, but definitely this. This piece of news made the show. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as your your casual non New Japan non ROH fan, they this treat. this is what's going to put more eyes on that product. Which, gotcha. if, at the name of the game, that's the most important thing for the right. guys. Gotcha. So hold on. So that means the king of Smarkville will probably regularly. Start watching ROH. Oh, mm. without question. <laughs> without question. I'll believe that shit I, when I see it. How you exactly. Doing? exactly. <laughs> how you doing? Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so from there, we had the British heavyweight title match uh, as champion Zack Sabre Jr. with Taka Michinoku defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi. And probably, and I'll go as far as to say this, probably one of the best matches yes. for Zack Sabre's career. Um, this is a win that he can hang his hat on. Mm -hmm. He, for lack of better description, went and defeated the John Cena of Japan. Oh, yep. oh wow. Hello. Hiroshi Tanahashi is an amazing athlete and an amazing champion, the ace of New Japan. And for him to defeat him and retain that, uh, that British heavyweight championship, it was, it was solid. And nobody can tie you in a knot like Zack Sabre Jr., telling you that yeah. man is the master of any submission you can think of some shit i've never even seen before not at all he does it mm -hmm. did you just say taka michinoku i did wow. yes taka fucking michinoku wow <clears throat> there's a name from the past <laughs> happy 20 year anniversary right? taka. <laughs> <laughs> oh man kai and tai yeah um, so then there was the IWGP Intercontinental title match uh, as Kota Ibushi defeated the champion Tetsuya Naito in what could be described as a banner win for Kota Ibushi. Mm -hmm. um, this is a match that Kota has been flirting with jumping into the upper echelon of New Japan for a while. Would you say he was a little bicarious? I, th I think possibly. Because <laughs> he was a golden boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a mark for the LIJ squad. So, you know, I, I, I look at this as a positive for Naito as well. I see him actually moving up the card and, uh, and challenging for the IWGP heavyweight championship very shortly. So, um, oh. next though, we had the ROH world title triple threat ladder match. As yes, you, yes. as you had Matt Taven, mm -hmm. Matt Taven, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. 
defeating the champion oh, Jay Lethal this is and whack. the villain Marty Skrull to win the championship. Whack. Note, that broke, that note, broke hold on, heart. note, must have stole the purple ladder from Prince's house and brought it way over there. <laughs> that was a big freaking purple ladder. Yeah. It was it was huge. Oh my gosh. Um, That's what she said. Ooh. <laughs> no, uh, so Taven, I'm really interested to see what he does with the championship. Yeah, same here. Because... If somebody needed something to revitalize his character, it's Matt Taven. Mm-hmm. Um, the fuck are you watching? <laughs> Taven's been great. I, I honestly, I've I've not been a huge fan of Taven, and he's he's definitely a lo- <sighs> he's a love it or hate it kind of a guy. And but Kodo Ibashi and Uchu Kanemana, <laughs> those are great wrestlers. <laughs> but Matt Taven's kind of boring. <laughs> No, it, it, Shit. <laughs> it, seriously <laughs> though, I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Matt Taven's going to do with the world championship. I really am. Um, I mean, Matt, he's done a, he's been a good job when he was pretending he was champion. Right. I mean, he did, he did a well, good job Well, that's what Jay that. Lethal was doing for the past. Hey. Oh, <laughs> easy. Oh, oh, easy. Oh, oh, Let me tell you something, oh, man. Man. Matt, we'll talk look, after the show. Look, I will tell you that I am not a huge Taven fan, but I was happy that he won. I did call it a while back, saying that it only makes sense mm-hmm. to have him ascend. Right. And right now that is, I am too by curiously wondering <laughs> <laughs> what's the next step for him and the kingdom be the fact that Lifeblood is making such a uh, a, a big scene as of late. Right. Yeah. Most definitely. And then, ladies and gentlemen, your main event. Okay. In the IWGP Heavyweight Championship match, you had Kazuchika Okada defeating... Excuse you? That's right. <laughs> Bless you. <Yeah. laughs> Kazuchika Okada defeating Jay White. Who? Jay White. Who the fuck is Jay White? <laughs> <Exactly>. Switchblade, <laughs> bitch. Switchblade. <laughs> In all fairness, I'll be honest with you, there were a lot of Switchblade shirts around New York yeah. Yeah, that's this true. past weekend. That's true. Yeah. So when when they originally had Jay White take over the helm of the Bullet Club, I was really unsure. Did you just what... scratch your head too? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I was just like, what the fuck are they doing? But he's he's really stepped it up. Really stepped it up. So what the fuck is the Bullet Club now? Because now you got apparently this Jay White, who I am not familiar with because I don't watch these uh, Japanese wrestlers like Jay White. Um, wow. <laughs> wow! Tell us how you really feel. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> so he's a Bullet Club. He's he's the mouthpiece of the Bullet. But then you got the villain Marty Skrull or Skrull or however you want to say it. He is part of the Bullet Club. That's Villain Inc. And then you got AEW, which is the Bullet Club. Well, the, the, but you got Baylor Club, which is part of the Bullet Club, which is AJ Styles Club, which all goes back you know to like? the NW fucking O because it's too sweet and the click, which the NWO came from. So basically, Shawn Michaels won. <laughs> wow. I will it's kind of like it's kind of like X Men. Everybody's a fucking member. <laughs> Everybody's a fucking member. Wow! <laughs> so nice. a pretty good show overall. It was it was a pretty good show yeah. overall. I would just say that the show, much like this recap, was way too long. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god! And you it handled like it, it was with nine, grace. Nine Thank matches. And flawless. Sin Ten City Steve, long. I appreciate that, man. Thank you want some for water, man? Because I mean. Mine wasn't even that long, and I was getting <laughs> parched. I know. I can only imagine. <laughs> we want to let all our listeners know that we're going to have the Tony Gunn interview coming after this segment, the OVW champion. This was a very good interview, so stay tuned to that. King Lucky, he's been uh, over here just... Getting a mm-hmm. hard on. Yeah, just ready to go with can, this. Oh, yeah. With this can you go to the bathroom and rub one out? Deal with the madness. <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, shit. Dig uh, it. NXT, man. Let's go. All right. So, uh, NXT, a very, very good show. First match of the night. War Raiders had that amazing entrance like they did at TakeOver Phoenix. Mm-hmm. I thought it was definitely going to be time for Black and Ricochet to get those belts. And that was a negative. Nope. Oh, you got to be quicker than that. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, that the match delivered. 
Uh, War Raiders have been on TV maybe once in the last. Yeah, they barely work. Couple weeks. Yeah. But uh -huh. here we yeah. go again. Oh, <laughs> oh, they're not on TV. Oh, they're not defending the belt. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> Who cares? It makes the match more important. Right, right. Yeah, no, I thought it was. I thought it was good they retained as well, too. Uh, the Dream and Matt Riddle match. Mm. Oh, my God. That Unexpectedly good. That, uh, I don't know. I, I knew that was going <laughs> to no. tear up the house. Hey, hey, unexpectedly good compared to where it was. Because I thought that it was going to be because they, their styles are complementary of each other when you looked at the match. But when you see them separately, I felt as if kind of like, okay, I don't know what the fuck this is going to look like. But it was a great match. So shut the fuck up and keep going. I thought, I thought it. <laughs> <laughs> He's over here looking at me like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought it made Riddle uh, in that yeah, match. Yeah, I thought it was doubt. good. It was a great. It was a great challenge for mm -hmm. him uh, to step up. And as you all know, Dream kept the belt, which was the right move. Right, right. very much. I agree. Um, elsewhere, you had Pete Dunn and Walter. Great match. One one name, right? Walter. 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 That was actually a very good match too. Did anybody think that Pete Dunn was going to retain? I didn't. No, I did. Nope. No, I, I didn't. didn't. <laughs> Walter looked like a. Beast. Walter's been a beast because yeah. if you watch NXT UK, <laughs> yeah. you would know that. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> I guess that begs this question. Why was an NXT UK match on the NXT TakeOver show? I think... Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say because uh, Triple H did the conference call before NXT TakeOver, and he said that he wanted to showcase the NXT UK brand on NXT pay-per-view. So, it, it that's that's right from Triple H's mouth. That's exactly the reason why. So, Matt Michaels, what you need to do is figure out how to get on the conference call. Boom. He's yeah. going to work his way in there. Yeah, yeah apparently, apparently yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Elsewhere. You, can, you two can get that cease and desist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elsewhere, you had the uh, women's championship oh, yeah, yeah. match, oh. Fatal 4-Way. Yeah. Baszler, Io, mm -hmm. Kyrie, and... The EST of NXT. I'm not gonna lie. I wanted EST to win. Yeah, I, I wanted her to win. I I kind of. Why we keep burying the EST? <laughs> I don't enough, like it. Not enough seed money to start. Oh, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> yes, but it was overall a it very a, good match. It was a good match. It made a lot of sense. Why I like Shayna. Shayna too. kept the belt. It did. I like that. Uh, but, yes, I, I was pulling for Bianca Belair as well, too. I thought she really had rose uh, up through the ranks after yeah. the uh, TakeOver Phoenix match tremendously. But yeah, she came up short. Her time's coming. Her time is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and how amazing okay. was the Johnny oh. Wrestling and Adam Cole match? Jeez. Epic. Gee, that is, it was awesome. It was. I, yeah. think, I think they were saying, wrestle forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could have watched that match. You know, two out of three falls is probably not enough. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. But it was good. It told a story, and, and I was happy with the result. I think uh, Adam Cole was way over, <laughs> way over in New York versus Johnny Wrestling. Yep. And... To put on the showcase that they did, it was amazing. Can someone that's considered way over still be champion? Yeah, oh, without question. <laughs> Let's move on to WrestleMania then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, without question. But overall, I think uh, a good showcase for NXT. They always seem to raise the bar. Okay. Uh, WrestleMania weekend or any other weekend that they're a part of. Yeah, it's always the better show because then the main event, the, the pay per view, is just so bad because NXT is so good. <laughs> Do you need a fucking hug? <laughs> no, that, I'm just saying, that's man. Just, that's all this shit always is. That's typically what the fans are screaming that's online. All they scream. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I can I can safely say though that the the main event of NXT Takeover was probably the best NXT match that I have ever seen, and that is no bullshit. That is no hyperbole. That is a fact. Yeah, but it didn't have Coochie Mama Uzukaza <laughs> in the main event. You so. say fucking Coochie Mama. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that you know what that means. So okay, it's time for Hall of Fame. 
Hall yeah. Of Fame. <laughs> How can you forget the Hall of Fame, the assault? I mean, yeah. uh, the award <laughs> yeah. ceremony. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we'll keep it short and sweet. A uh, ring setup. I know you guys liked it. I thought it was fucking stupid. I didn't I like agree. it. I didn't like yeah. it. Okay, good. <laughs> well, some mark in here. Papa Smark. I Papa Smark, say. I sure did. Papa I, Smark. I, King it. Leon de the Gunda. I thought that uh, it uh, it it showed. It showed mm-hmm. because you had an assault happen because it would never happen on a stage. Nope. So that was, you know, the, the fans in New York. I'm sorry, New York, but you're crazy motherfuckers sometimes. Um, that guy just wanted fucking attention. Apparently, according to some stories, he put shit on the online about Bret Hart. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the thing is, is that, uh, A, obviously, uh, he doesn't have a big following because no one said anything to anyone well, about this. Well, he does have the big following. It's called Charges. <laughs> big following Charges. That got dropped today. I'll tell you what, he <laughs> left he left with a few receipts. <laughs> he did. He got yeah. many receipts. Uh number two, all you fans who posted that shit online, shame on you, because that gives this guy the fire he wanted. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as cool as it is to see the receipts happen, you know, back off sometimes, guys. Don't give any other encouragement for this kind of shit. Yeah. That's just, you know, plain and simple. Um it was cool to hear Bret Hart go, oh, and then see it go black. <laughs> because what? at that... That is so fucking dark. Well, it was, because for about 33 seconds, I didn't know if he was dead. Oh, Did he have a, a stroke again or something? No, you Jeez. saw the guy, you saw the yeah, guy come yeah, in, yeah. and all you hear is, oh, as it goes black. So therefore, what they just created in my mind is, you know, any good, go back to Shakespeare, any good theater, right? All the violence happened off stage. Yeah. So by going black, I'm sitting there going, fuck, is he dead? Right. What the fuck? And that generated. So then that leads to the next thing, the conspiracy theorists mm. who believe that this was all set up and it was someone they hired to do that. <laughs> fuck. To get the hands that they got? He didn't get he didn't get receipts. He got a fucking tax return. Yeah, well, unless you looked on the internet and saw that, you I didn't did know well, because I saw that what I'm saying though is on the network it went yeah, black, yeah. and then this is so you know it could always people could just make shit up and whatnot. But anyway, overall, uh, decent ceremony. Um, finally, got to recognize China. <clears throat> yeah, uh, that was special. They are still pushing. I know her mom. Um, is definitely behind an effort to get her in as a solo. Uh, Which she should get should in. She should. should. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. Uh, this also, probably softened it a little bit and, and made it more possible. Well, and the other thing, too, is that in the end, you have um, Hulk Hogan, Sonny, X-Pac, and China. Who all have porn tapes out there. I mean, like, all those people you just named combined have more hours of porn than China (laughs) did in one night. (laughs) But not one night in China. Well, I don't know how many minutes that was, but that was good. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's it's about time to get past that and put her in. No, I, 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 I definitely agree because she actually was, in my memory, the first person that I could recognize. Like, wow, that is the baddest chick ever. I mean... Before anybody else was doing inter ginger mats, to my remembrance, that was her. Sherry Martel. Okay. How old am I? Exactly. No, I'm just telling you. Okay. Sherry Martel was. (laughs) And and Booker T and and, and, uh, Stevie Ray pointed that out. You know, Sherry is the the quintessential. She's the the model for going forward. But really, um, when you looked at what uh, they said, uh, DX said about. Uh, I think it was DX, or whoever said that uh, China Memorial Battle Royal has a nice ring to it. Yes, it does. So if they're going to do Andre, who's the eighth winner of the world, you might as well have the ninth, the ninth winner of the world be the Memorial Women's Battle Royal. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, Honky Tonk Man, we got to sing and dance and have fun with Honky. Um, and then uh, Harlem Honkies. Heat came off <laughs> right after the Honky. Honkies? Well, <laughs> Harlem Heat came in <laughs> after the Honky. And... Um, and uh, Booker T dropped the N word again, which was crazy. Uh, it was better him than Vince. 
<laughs> it oh, never boy. happened, bro. It never happened. He didn't oh, drop I'm the N word. That sorry. happened on live TV back oh, in don't the Don't call me a mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, Legacy. Legacy is where you're going to see, I think, now uh, them move uh, to do guys like King Kong Bundy. Um, you're going to get that now because everyone's like, well, they should acknowledge these guys before they're dead. Well, you know what? Your fans are fickle. Fickle, I say, because you don't want nine hours of a fucking ceremony, but at the same time, you want all these people recognized. So mm-hmm. Legacy is a great idea. You know, Ludwig Fashan gets in, Buddy Rose gets in, uh, you know, uh, Bruce Brody. You know, it's like, why the fuck was he not in? Well, mm-hmm. it's it's just, this is the reason. Um, so you have that Legacy. Uh, the Warrior Award, I still think, is the dumbest fucking thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Give it away, like, fucking at the Royal Rumble or something. I'll take one. I'll take one. <laughs> well, yeah, you could qualify for it easily. Thank you. Um <laughs> Because you are sort of a make a wish kid. Oh. Um, it's okay. Zinger. <laughs> I just got a chance to use my left arm for once. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Were you uh, bi curious about it? Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to. I, I, I wish. Damn, I'm going to shut the fuck up. Yeah, you're number 601 on John Cena's list. So, uh, <laughs> What number is he on now? 600. 600. So you're 600. Oh, shit. I'm going to get the fucking Dunkinomics. Oh, foreshadowing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I still think that's a waste of fucking time um and you know overall it's always good to hear these stories um and then you bring out brutus beefcake <laughs> jesus christ yeah um uh, first of all why is that man walking with scissors <laughs> you know I, I was waiting for him to fall on him um <laughs> you know just like in the day uh hulk hogan carried him uh for the uh, ceremony itself too so yeah Oh no! You know what? It's a fun night, um, but fans, fucking stop this shit. Get the reality grasp that you are not the fucking show, people. Right. And that goes for all you fucks at WrestleMania as well. You are not the fucking show. You don't control it. And stop having matches in the fucking crowd. Did that happen this year? That was a lot of commotion. Yeah. A lot of commotion in the crowd, but with good reason. I mean, they did have a light shining in their face. For WrestleMania, yes, uh, I've been to many of these, and I, I enjoy going. I for this particular show, I, I would say it it's not. It actually didn't reach my all time favorite, but I do thank Vince for saying I'm going to give everybody what they want this time because that never happens. If I had a bracket like NCAA bracket. I would have been all messed up because we were all trying to figure out who was going to be the one that was going to lose. You know whose bracket it, would have won? Not yours, because yeah. you did have a, a few losses I in had there a few, as well. But I would have won. But let's talk about some of these matches here. Uh, <laughs> the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match: Tony Nese and Buddy Hold on. Murphy. Time out! Time out! I thought King Lucky was gonna announce the 205 yeah yeah, that, 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 yeah i think i think it's only fair that's, 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 that's enough lucky whatever you finally saw a match in 205 <laughs> so you might as well count that's the only way we can get them to watch it well uh, the just, winner of the lucky 05 invitation <laughs> <laughs> well to be honest we were actually walking into the uh to our seating when that match was on timed it perfect <laughs> boom <laughs> of course you know but um Damn. but hey uh, we got our, our, our champion. You're going to start watching it now that we have our, our, our champion, Buddy Murphy. What? I was just seeing if he was going to pay attention. Oh, yeah. he tried to get Boom. you. Oh. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That's. That's a no for me. Still. Look at him. You, look at him. <laughs> you're not going to give nothing. I mean, he ain't going to give nothing now. You've been getting us for the longest time. We tried to get you. You can't get Matt on nothing. He just... I guess not. Matt is like zero fucks <sighs> over here with everything. Tony no, Nese, like, Matt. I, I, that was, it was I know, it's Tony Nese. <sighs> I was unhappy. <laughs> I was, For the first six happy. fucking matches, it was all faces. Yeah. It was just like, oh my God. Soft porn. The WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal, Carmella won. You know I love Carmella. And eliminating Sarah. No, Could you she, imagine that she was the, the, the second to last to be in the ring? Like, she y'all? didn't eliminate. She eliminated 
Nimilated. She eliminated L- Liger and Muda. Because <laughs> she went out of the ring during the match. <laughs> then she slid back in and dumped him over. It's like I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> Pretty well, much. This, this was a good win it's for Carmella because okay. she's from that area, right? And yeah. So her dad was there. It was a the feel good moment. Yeah. The characters from that area. Yeah, of course. The characters Boom. From that area. But yeah, it was a feel good moment, and I and I enjoyed it. The of course raw you enjoyed it, Papa. You know it. <laughs> Listen, the Raw Tag Team Championship match. Papa oh, called this Christ. one. Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Oh, woo woo woo. Beat you the Revival. No, I, I, I like the Revival. I'm a huge Revival fan. I wanted them to keep it, but I knew they were going to give it to them. Yeah. So, Another feel-good moment. And, feel good. Was it oh, enough geez. to revive the tag team? Kurt Hawkins. It's funny that all these feel-good moments happened on the pre-show when the place was half empty. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt Hawkins broke his streak. That was the most important thing. Yeah, because, I mean, he couldn't actually win. <laughs> because, you know, it's not fake. Yeah. All streaks end at WrestleMania. There you go. Yeah. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Braun Strowman. He oh, eliminated oh. Colin. Oh, it's a waste of time because those guys aren't wrestlers. And just. Ah, it must be Nicholas time. Ah. Oh, man. Oh, they fuck, did, man. Hey, you know what? They, they, they saved... did some of the better fucking heel work than half the company does. That's true. true. It's actually true. very <laughs> fucking you know true. What? They saved me because no Nicholas was involved anywhere in the show. True. Well, look, finally... The show starts. Hey. <laughs> okay, and um, you had the Universal Championship match. I just like how Paul Hamey just came out and said, boom, we're going back to where we love Las Vegas. That was us. I think I was the only one cheering, although I'm not a Brock fan. But for the fact, Paul said Las Vegas, I felt I should stand up for my city. Cheap pop. Right, exactly. But we had that match. Everyone thought Brock was winning. Yes, I you did. You know what? Papa Smart yeah. said, no way Seth gets the belt. You did say I said Seth gets the belt. You did. Give me what I want. <laughs> I said Seth gets the belt. So fucking what? <laughs> so fucking what? It was a fucking dumb move. You think so? Yeah, keep the belt on Brock. No. Have him go into the UFC with the fucking title. I know you like that. And it's I think fucking- it's actually pretty cool, too. But it's time to move on from the Brock Lesnar experiment. Well, that four time time champion. That only would have been time champion. That only would have been good if he went to UFC and and won the UFC belt, so he can have both belts. If he would have got his ass whooped, oh right, it would have l- UFC is legit. I'm and just, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Cromier is not going to take the title and then walk into the WWE with the Universal title. Come on, dude, it's totally could be scripted. <laughs> Now you got Seth Rollins. What are you going to do? Put him with Drew McIntyre? <laughs> oh, that's right. Drew McIntyre, who looked like a fucking million bucks going down to fucking Roman Reigns because we needed Roman Reigns to go over. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fucking all you people who like fucking faces winning bullshit. AJ. Did you just say we love fucking faces? What yeah. kind of face? Big lips? Collagen lips? By Curious. Oh, by Curious yeah. lips. Okay. <laughs> right. I can't do nothing with what's down there. Charlie like, Caruso. You know. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? I'd fuck her face. Jeez. Now, <laughs> the next match we have was. And, 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 don't expect me to go into the editing room and, and take that out. So you're gonna have, you're gonna have to take the hit on that mat. I, I'd take I'm, your hit anytime, man. AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. I actually thought Orton was going to win this one. Oh, fuck you. I did. I thought Orton was going to win this one. <laughs> I thought Orton was going to win when AJ went for a phenomenal forearm, and then he caught him in an RKO out of nowhere. But AJ pulled it out. He pulled Surprise. out? Yeah. So AJ pulled out? <laughs> it, you know, hand signals are the fucking best thing yeah, for a podcast. Because right. totally no one gives a shit because we can't see it. <laughs> All right, so y- y- y'all done now? Yes. All yes, right, there's not much it. more to yes, say. Sir. It was a good rivalry, good match, and uh, AJ went over, and there you go. Right. He's set to take on Kofi now because that makes all the fucking sense in the world, face versus face. <laughs> all right. <sighs> Let's do this. SmackDown Tag Team Championship, Fatal 4-Way, The Usos, The Bar, Shinsuke and Rusev, Aleister Black and Ricochet. 
What did y'all think about this? Um, I like the fact that Usos, because they're my favorite, and I know they faces. But I like the Usos. As far as I'm concerned, they can keep the belt for another year. That's just me, though. I didn't think Alistair and um, Ricochet was going to win because, um, you know, I know they didn't win at NXT as well, but I didn't mean I didn't they see didn't the reason. They didn't win at Raw. Raw. That, right. That yeah. was three uh, three opportunities so, in one week. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, can they find three. Can yeah. they finally break them up, for God's sakes? Please. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. I know, right? Why I'm not? Why put them together? Them. Yeah. Vince, please. Break them up. Please. We have the fall count anywhere match with Shane and The Miz. And I thought that match was uh, it was all right. I mean, he got him climbing on top of camera, uh, uh, scaffold, scaffolds, yeah. whatever, probably, it probably and falling. Came, and it came off better, I bet you, on TV than it did it, in the ring. Sure, rain. I'm pretty sure it did. Because well, it, it was pretty brutal. I will tell you that a lot of people Fr- thought Miz was going to win that one. Well, yeah, it would make sense to make Miz win that one. That was a face match yeah. that would have that made sense. Have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with with a huge feel good moment at Mania, the Mania, Mania moment. But I still want to see George get his mullet shaved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where was Brutus the fucking barber beefcake when he needed him? Oh man, yeah, pretty much. I do love how George became the new the meme. meme. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because of that. That was that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You also oh, have... Again, Simon, great moment <laughs> for podcasting. <laughs> Using your all right, hands. all right, all right. I'll put it back in my, my pants. Shut the fuck up. Okay? You got the <laughs> WWE Women's Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way. You got the Iconics and the Boston Hug Connection and Beth and Natalia, Nia Jackson, Tamina. Iconics won. I called it. Oh, Jesus. Of course you did. I Here called it. I know you I called, called the it. the Iconics. That doesn't mean you I fucking called it. it. <laughs> that means that you fucking marked out for someone <laughs> and said they should win it because they're my fucking favorite. It made he no didn't sense. Say favorite. He said friends. Actually, I'm he a said huge, friends. I'm a he huge friends. Sasha Mark he, if we're going to keep it real. If, but well, he lo- you, he, you take Iconics over them because Bailey's with Sasha and you don't like Bailey, dude. I like Bailey. Bullshit. Now, Not as much as you like the Iconics. Well, he um, likes the Iconics so much, he, he, what is it, retweeted or reposted the, uh, the our picture back on the that's site. That's right. You know, yeah. so that's how much he likes the Iconics. Iconic. Yeah, it just made no sense again. Yeah. It, it really didn't. Well, was- I felt that it was the way that they won made sense. I'd say the way that they yeah. won didn't make sense. But you, you know, don't see it. Yeah. No, I mean, you fucking, you know, again, it's like, well, if you're going to do something, then have that moment when you have Bret Hart coming out on stage with Natalia and the, just have them go over then. Have Beth and Natalia go. So what would have so what would have happened if they had a, if, if they had to win the titles? They probably would have had it for about a week, maybe two weeks and got taken off after the shakeup or something. I'm just curious what would have been cuz I'd be rude to you. tell me the iconics? I'm not d- no, that's King Smarkville. I'm just saying I could see a little bit more work happening with those titles with on the Iconics moving forward versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia. That's all I'm saying. I, I actually just, agree just, with you know, I second that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying you could work a little bit more with it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. We have the WWE Championship match. Kofi and the new Daniel Bryan. Kofi Mania. Kofi Running Mania. Wild. I got to tell you, it's... To to be in that stadium and to to witness, I mean, that right there was just awesome to hear eighty two thousand just going crazy for this particular match and wanted this particular outcome. Pretty much, we all kind of thought it was going to happen and it should happen, so we were kind of waiting and exciting for that. But this is where I, I would say everyone kind of woke back up and. And was just really into it from uh, beginning to end. So overall, it turned out the positioning where they was uh, where the car, where they were in the car in the middle of the show was perfect. That worked out well too. So it was well, good. Well, I will say, all jokes aside, <clears throat> I think that the reason why the crowd was behind it because the match was bigger than uh, you know eleven years. I think the match was bigger than you know Vince McMahon saying, "Well, you guys are complaining," or bigger than the fact that people complaining about, "Well, The Rock had the belt." I think it was the fact of the matter that you saw history happen, and now it's a checkbox off. So now everybody that bitched and complained about it can now shut the fuck up because now it has happened. Mm-hmm. It is a new day, <laughs> new champion, and now we have new possibilities for the future. I cried. 
inspirationally. I did. Yeah. I cried. I was happy. And um, I think a lot good. of other people did. So it was a feel-good moment. You, what you're saying is you live vicariously through Kofi King. I actually did. I lived vicariously. <laughs> and I didn't have to wear a whale's penis on my forehead. Um, but I will, I, I, will, I will say, I'll even say, uh, um, if you're familiar, the FSW champion Chris Bay, yeah, he had posted online where he was crying and he was on it. It's great because when you see somebody, you can now look and say, hey, man, something that we didn't know was a question mark. Could I be the company standard of WWE? Now I can be. Now it's a possibility. And for that, I am saying Simon Street is telling you, Vince McMahon, whether you listen to this or you have your PR people or some other fucking guy, thank you. All right. Well, to the point. United States Championship match followed. Right after that, some more Joe and Rey Mysterio. Now, I must say that I like how that ended. Okay, some more came out, took him out in a few seconds, and that was it. It was under a wrap. 60 seconds. There was no need for the match to go any longer than what it is. And the, and you do understand why that happened, right? Mysterio's injured, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason they yeah. did that. Yeah. <laughs> but I will tell also you, too, at the same time. Also, too, Santa Claus is not real, Daryl. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but you well, know what? It did play well on TV. But, yes, he he was injured right. uh, on Raw. But it did play well on TV. With well, him. he made it look like a monster if you didn't yeah. know what was going on. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, obviously, it worked. <laughs> it worked. <Yeah>. Perfect. <laughs> Love it that way. The Roman Reigns match and Drew uh, McIntyre uh, match right after. Fuck me. Yeah. I'm going to say something, okay. and you're going to be shocked. I actually thoroughly enjoyed that match. Boom. Oh. Which is weird because, as you know, I'm not all happy hunky-dory with Roman Reigns. I actually enjoyed the match. Now, was it what I wanted to see him at WrestleMania? No. But was it enjoyable? Yes. No, I, I, the match itself is not the problem. The problem is, is that... You built up Drew McIntyre right. for the last three weeks. I agree with you that. You rushed the match, and you made him look like a monster, destroying people. And then you have Reigns fucking beat him. Reigns beats him. Why? Why? I agree. And then, you know, the argument is, well, hey, you got to hey, position hey. him. Tell him that it's human nature. <laughs> I, so anyway, I'm why. You I'm were just... saying why. I mean, shit. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, I, listen. I The best part of that match is Roman's pyro. Oh, because man. they give that him was a man. Yeah, they, they gave him a lot. He signed had half his, of the pyro budget. They signed him up for the works. You know, if he was a pizza, it'd be the works pizza, okay? <laughs> because they I mean, it was just everywhere for everything he did. Was was the king next to you? Was was Lucky next to you just jerking off every time those fireworks? <laughs> he went? was. He was. His listen, his his listen. phone was up in the air every time Pyro splash went off. Splash zone. Splash yeah. zone. <laughs> it was a splash zone. I will tell you when I pop down my money and I pay for the ticket, I expect to see Pyro. And I love to see it. And it was amazing, yes. Well, next you have the no holds bar match with Triple H. And Batista. Now, I'm gonna tell you the most interesting part. I like, as as being a fan, there is watching what's happening on the stage that you all don't get to see. And the funny thing is, as they bring those cars out, that Batista came in, having an issue trying to get those cars back <laughs> behind the screen. Okay, and they're going out and trying to reverse, and no, that's not right. <laughs> pulling back out and reverse, and pulling back out and reverse. I mean, even when the time Triple H, just so you know. The time that he came out on the other side in that car, they still was trying to get Batista's <laughs> yeah, car. Yeah, they had a lot back. of technical was, difficulties. Yeah, it was just pretty funny. But uh, but the match, I mean, um, Triple H. Yeah, of course. He, I, ha I have a question. Sure. I didn't. I didn't really catch it when I watched it. Did Triple H spit all over the guy driving? The demon buggy, or what the fuck you call that? Because I was watching, and he did the spit thing. I was just like, they must have paid that guy a lot of money. Because he just just showered everywhere. Well, also, I don't know if this made it on live TV, because I haven't watched it back yet, but uh, Batista tripped on the way to the yes. ring. Right. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And he yeah, wasn't he the only one. There were like two or three people during the night mm. that had slip-ups, and I bet Vince was just... Fuming. They made damn sure to cut that out. Yeah. In the, in the rebroadcast. Yeah. So, oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so Big Dave ate shit trying to get into the ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, was, it, it was pretty bad. It was one of the. I mean, the most unique spots we've ever seen. I've never seen 
someone use pliers to pull out a yes. nose ring. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> that that <laughs> right. was sold yeah. amazingly yeah. well, too. It, it looked really good on TV. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Um, and Batista's done. He retired. Yeah. 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 Retired yeah. right so after. Re- retirement mania. Yeah. Give me what I want. <laughs> <laughs> now you can be a full-time guardian. Also, you saw John Cena. No oh, fuck. Interrupt yeah. Elias. No, I like to call it midlife crisis. The doctor of thugonomics. All right, so next we had Angle's farewell match. <laughs> Baron Corbin. <laughs> that was your favorite part of the show. And Kurt Angle. Well, hey, we're trying to get through the rest of it. We got, uh, but that was part of the show. Yeah, it was part of the show. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll His bars back. are weak. Are we as shit? Oh, yeah. oh, he wants to. Or put, did, did he just he, jump he, the gun? He wants to put more time on it. You jumped the gun then. Who is hosting this show yes. right now? But you said all of us were. Not anymore. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Hello. Oh, I'm fucking sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll back Let me read. Down. Am I going to get written up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was. You're on Kurt Angle. He fucking already yeah. jumped to yeah, Cena and shit. No, that's what I was on. But I just, <laughs> I just saw something in my eyes go like this, and I was like, "What the heck is going on?" It's and once rough. again, it's those those hand signals that it's really <laughs> weird. So let's go over to uh, Baron Corbin and Kurt Angle match. Pretty much what happened. We knew what was going to happen, Ooh. and it works out perfect. Good job, Baron. I actually went and took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad all you fuckers. Out there who were just like, nah, nah, nah. this is how you do it. Put them over at Mania. Have them win like a typical heel. Leave the ring. Then give Angle his props. That's it. It's done. It's over. He's retiring. Did you watch Except Raw? Except for Raw. Okay, I'm about to say it. I was like, that made no fucking sense. Of course not. And then we had the Intercontinental Championship match with the Demon. Finn Balor going against Bobby Lashley. No surprise there. What, what it was a surprise. Bobby Lashley was borrowing some of Rey Mysterio's contacts. <laughs> <laughs> and was trying to act like ain't nobody can fucking notice your eyes a different color. What the fuck? I will tell you that by this time at night, um, people were just kind of like, uh, like we like we like this match, but we're tired. That's kind of how the stadium was yeah, being at this was, point. It was like, uh. Dude, but you should have been happy. It was two black guys going against each other. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> See me after the show, uh, Matt Michaels. You're gonna get a future endeavor right. speech. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what I gotta deal with. And then we had the winner take all triple threat match for the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championship: Becky, Ronda, and Charlotte. Any surprises there from anyone? No. Not enough. Okay. I, I can just tell you that the man's always on top. I will say, just to go back now over <laughs> to um, John Cena, I I would always say, you know, I know you've been bragging King Lucky. Ah, who said, who said, for the longest. And by the way, I'm not saying John Cena is about to retire. But I always felt that as a gift to us fans who love John Cena, before he retired, to do an entire Thugonomics run, at least at one time, because we all wanted him to become that heel. So I don't know if that's if he's. I know he's because of age, he's uh, getting so, close. Wait, wait, wait. But wait, but, but but Matt, shut up, shut, shut up, Matt. Damn. So but, wow, what, Matt, shut up. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but we got We already gonna be talking after the show. God damn, bro. You all right, right, go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, very simple. Very simple. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So Elias is a heel. Then it gets broken up by Cena, who comes out as a heel. That's true. But he gets a pop as a baby face because fans wanted him to be a heel. So now the fans like him. So therefore, he's a face against Elias, who's a heel, even though Cena is supposed to be a face. I agree with you. It's as if these fans are the worst villains ever. Well... I'm just saying. I get what you're saying. When Vince, when Vince just listens to what the crowd wants, it just makes no sense sometimes. I agree. Because y'all shouldn't be booking the show. They are. <laughs> Speaking of things that don't make sense, John Cena wearing New York Yankees gear. Yes, suspect. And he's a one hundred percent. He's oh. a Boston guy. Oh. So I'm about to lose their Boston card. <laughs> but but didn't you get it? 
he was wearing Babe Ruth's number. He was the Babe it was, Ruth. It was the Babe Ruth calling his shot. So he called his shot because he's that much of a legend. Yeah. You know. He's the Babe he's Ruth the, of wrestling. He's the Hulk Hogan of wrestling. Boom. Could, could, could he have at least <laughs> updated... <laughs> fuck. Could he have at least updated his thugonomics to the year 2019? Because that was a fucking flashback garbage can, what he was wearing. I'm just going to be honest. He could have upgraded that whole shit. Along with them bars, which was garbage. I enjoyed the spot. He was more so like the doctor of dadonomics. There he was. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing, too, is The Undertaker wasn't there. And that was really sucky because The Undertaker wasn't there. And they should have had The Undertaker. <laughs> he should, so John Cena could have come out, and then he could have wrestled Kurt Angle, and then The Undertaker could have come out, and he could have wrestled Arise. And then the See, Undertaker now you're sounding like King Lucky because that's, exactly. what I, that's what I was hearing. La, 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 <laughs> sing a smarky song. La, la, you know la, 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 la. My predictions oh, are Lord. the money. So after Mania, we now we now get into Raw the next night. And I guess we all can kind of just talk about what stood out besides Lars Sullivan finally making his entrance. God, please go away. <laughs> you know. Please I think hey, go away. hey, stop making fun of Zangief from Street Fighter. <laughs> I think it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Fucking destroy that that retiring guy who's <laughs> now in the ring again <laughs> when his career was finished yeah Jeez. that's yeah, a, yeah I'm, I'm not a large with fan. a head with a headbutt from hell yeah Lars is a beast dude you'll like yeah. him you'll like him eventually yeah well, as soon as no. he goes face yeah. as soon as everyone else likes him he's gonna be to taking pictures with has him. no <laughs> depth at all to his character mm. at all and yet and yet, for the longest time, uh, I like Baron Corbin. Exactly. I like Baron thank Corbin. You. I, I actually, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I actually do like Baron Corbin, even though I thought he shouldn't have wrestled Angle in his last match and beat him. But, but you're talking about someone with no depth. <sighs> but I will say that at okay. least Baron Corbin can cut a promo. This guy what? can't cut a promo. What? To what? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> what the fuck kind of promo assist program are you talking about? I, I think he can cut a Dude. promo. Dude. That motherfucker not only needs a corporate rub to get where he is today, he also needs probably an invisible teleprompter to help him do the fucking <laughs> pregnant pauses he constantly has. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Lacey Evans finally does something when she just strolls Amazing. on out. May I honestly say I wish I was the guy that was sitting right at that point where she was <laughs> flat out. I'm sorry. Amazing. Lacey Evans is a hot, hot, hot mama. Where do y'all think that's going? Oh, it's... It's going to be Becky <laughs> Becky the shout out yeah. of Lacey. Yeah. That's that's Lacey's career right there. Lacey, goodbye. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm gonna lay this out there. I All think right. I think Lacey will be the champion before the year's out. I agree. Mark before the works. year's out? Okay. Yep. So she's I think she's got she, tremendous upside. There's a great story to tell there. She won't take it off of Becky this go around, but she will get there. I wouldn't be surprised if she took it maybe SummerSlam. Yeah, I could see that. Well, I'll be there to see that. We'll see. But yeah. is it one belt? Because it's I know, gonna, right, I know so that I know. I keep smelling Raj's dick from your mouth. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> hey, Raj is you actually use the street a, phrase. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Raj has some good news, but I didn't pull it from there. However, I will say <laughs> that I do oh. see. <laughs> I do see where <laughs> you do that pretty well. There's a job for you somewhere. <laughs> but I will say that without question, the company is moving forward with a one title strategy. And it will make all of the performers better. Yeah, that makes one sense. Title. That makes sense. Yeah, that would be great because the one title will mean what? Because you've already had one fucking title, essentially, because Brock hasn't been on TV. So yeah. now that you put the universal title on someone who's on TV, now it's going away, and now you're like, I have no problem going away. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Make some sense. I, I think for, like, when you go to Fox, right, instead of having the, the championship or the titles, one on each show, it makes it more interesting when you have a wrestler going back and forth, male I or female. I, I, I will and agree I with that. Statement. I think that it's going to be – it's going to also raise the level up for the, the tag teams as well, too. Now, oh, come now, on. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, now, here's on. the question that I have with that whole theory. 
What do you do when someone like Baron Corbin has the fucking title? And that works on a Raw USA brand. But when you go to Fox, it doesn't translate so well with those pregnant pauses. And uh, and so, if y'all guys are whining and crying about... I'm just saying. And, and, and I'm sorry, I'm picking on the guy. But I'm just saying. He's like, not getting the if, title. If, yeah. Well, I'm just Baron, saying. Baron Corbin on, will son. not be your main champion. I no. hope the fuck not. It, especially looking like it's an Olive Garden waiter. It's going to be... <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's gonna be fucking Roman Reigns. Come on, I mean this that is makes sense. ridiculous. That makes sense. Reigns well, you know, will hold the title before the end of the year. Yeah, she and he's gonna be the, the one. He's months. gonna be the one holding the belt, and then all you fuckers are gonna be like, "Well, Kofi should have the belt." <laughs> what about Kofi? <laughs> you know, it just makes no sense. That's what I'm saying. This makes no sense. This idea of merging these belts. Why? Why the fuck do it? So, Michaels, what what would you say would make sense? Mm-hmm. Not to fucking put a champion going uh, people going back in between the shows so just keep the brand separate yes fox has its own entity and environment and raw has its own entity and, and why environment. not okay all right, all right. why yeah. not what about Most, nxt can he can they still visit between the brands still because i, I like think that's that. fucking ridiculous oh man but i, I like I when they visit it interesting <laughs> that alistair black and uh, Ricochet. Ricochet still have NXT banners, even though they were promoted as call ups. But what happens next week? Oh, Superstar Shakeup. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it just makes no sense. You got EC3 doing nothing. Nothing. They're totally right. tanking. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. He's tanking right now. He wasn't even. I don't know. It's tough. And I, I'm a fan of EC3, but. But are we really surprised? Why? Are we really are we really surprised? I mean, there's nothing to me in my mind that really stands out because usually it happens a lot sooner than that. Sometimes it's like six months. After six months, usually NXT talent starts just being buried. You have a couple that stand out. I mean, if you kind of look at it, are yeah, you surprised? but you don't you don't hype it up on a video. Have him come in and just fucking bury him. Hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, isn't that the history of WWE and what they've done to NXT for the past fucking five years? Not counting no. The Shield? Not no counting way, Sasha dude. and Bayley? Not, no. well, well, I can't even really say Bayley. Not right Bayley's away. Bayley's been murdered. Yeah, but not right away. Bayley held the championship. But those were the exceptional ones that no, came no, out no, of no, NXT. No, no. no I'm, right, talking, right. I'm talking straight from NXT into the WWE ring and being buried right off the bat. Sami Zayn? What the fuck are you talking about? Sami Zayn was... He got the biggest fucking applause. He did get a... But he had a big push. And even though it didn't descend immediately, they pumped him all up. We thought he was going to go somewhere. And then they started burying him. Yeah, but he didn't go into the ring and then get buried right the fucking way. Well, because he's not EC3. I mean, let's be honest. EC3. EC3 needs a mouthpiece. Bottom line. Yes. No. No, no I, would, I would disagree. No, I don't, he doesn't need my face. No. Fu- he's no. phenomenal. To me, I don't think he's ready To me, yet. EC3 is ready. He There's is. no reason why they should have called him up. I'll be honest with you. They shouldn't have called him up in the first place. They rushed the whole series of call-ups. Because then, I mean, Lacey, got, was part of, Lacey was also part of that. But, but Lacey was fine. They didn't do anything with her. They just kept bringing her out, so everyone got pissed. I know, and they her built her the right blah, blah. heat for her. That perfect. Exactly. It was fucking perfect. But EC3, he, they did nothing with yeah. Right, yeah. at all. Yeah, because you look at heavy machinery. They've also been used, mm-hmm. and they've been used well, I think. Yeah, yeah they, they were the best conga line fucking I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you guys this. Um, <laughs> Hashtag EC3 matters. Okay. Seriously. Actually, actually, that's pretty Give that's EC3 pretty... a chance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's y'all take on Dean Ambrose? Yeah. Uh, work. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Work. It's I, a work? Work. Originally, I thought it was a work, but I think it's a work. after yes, after yesterday. He, he's going to be at Cauliflower early, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's not a fucking work. Yeah, it's it, he's done. He's yeah. done. And, and I don't think he'll sign away uh, his talents with someone else. I think he's just merely taking a break. And then he'll be back, you know. Maybe I hope so, man, because I'm I'm really gonna miss him. Just to be completely honest, I'm gonna miss him. I can see him coming back in the Rumble. I would I would love to see that happen even sooner. To be honest with you, I, I'm gonna really miss him. I'm, I'm gonna see him at the fucking Galleria Mall. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, this means more time that he'll be in town. Shit, you know. Well, let me ask. Well, you. when you see him, tell him that I, I'm I miss him. 
Okay, I will. <laughs> you probably say, "Tell that fucking weirdo, shut the fuck up." <laughs> I know. I will tell. So him. we had Simon El- Street misses him. We had Elias in the ring, and what do you know? Taker shows up. Yeah, pretty exciting. That yeah, until spot. Elias took fucking forever escaping. <laughs> he was straddling <laughs> that fucking rope for like three fucking minutes. Ev- evidently, Taker couldn't get an Uber to the stadium. <laughs> Not on Sunday. Yeah. He couldn't. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was a good spot. It was a good spot. Uh, Taker, I don't know where they're going with it because, you know, he only wrestles at the big shows, and we don't have a big show coming up. So, I mean, it was just probably post-mania. But well, wasn't it fun just but, to see him nonetheless? But something's got to be going on. Has to be. Because you had Cena come out, and now you had Taker come out. Yeah. So well, they'll also where be are part they? of the superstar shakeup. What Those I'm saying two? though is Elias himself. <laughs> where are I they didn't know going? The free agents with this? were part of the yeah. shakeup. No, I, yeah. I just want to know where they're going with it because that's I don't know. you got just he just had two superstars that are Hall of Famers come in and just bury him essentially. So are they building him up where he's going to be on the level and maybe taking on a hunter or something? I don't. Like, I think, I'm confused. I think you're right on. I think Do you think you're right he'll on take the Hunter's uh, career. Have like a, a farewell match oh. for Hunter, or at least in the in in the in ring competitor. Even though I don't think they'll no. rehash that, I don't think, they'll I don't think yeah, so either. It story. just doesn't make sense to me. But but I do think your Matt Michaels on the right trail of he's starting to get that rub where he's going against the main event guys. Yeah, I mean, does that mean Saudi Arabia? Yeah, are we going to see something Fair there? One? Maybe. Yeah, and you I mean another assassination. Taker is <laughs> that is the next big show. And Taker is rumored to be on that show. Oh. oh I'm boy. just wondering if we see, like, Hogan be the next one to interrupt him in Saudi. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep having these legends interrupt his, you know. Right. Because they're not using him in the ring. <laughs> Pretty much. He's one person that I can say, even though he hasn't been wrestling, I think it's refreshing to keep him interesting and have him go through these different angles, and he's still been able to, you know, be relevant. succeed and be relevant. It's, well, it's building his brand yeah, at the basically. end of the day. Yeah, same I mean, thing with Bliss. They were doing it with Bliss for a while. I mean, the, you know, they kept did, it relevant. They, they did that with him in NXT. Yeah. Yeah. Guy never wrestled. He just no, walked he around didn't. backstage. <laughs> really, he just did. <laughs> Guys, we're getting ready to start our uh, Tony Gunn interview in just a second. But before we get out of here, any final thoughts? We could go around and, and see what you guys got to say. And I know we had a lot to wrap up this WrestleMania wrestling weekend. So, uh, Sin City Steve, I mean, again, welcome to the show, man. Um, any final words, anything you want to throw out there to the people? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been a hell of a long week, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, as Mania Week always is. Um, tons of just amazing matchups. Um there were, I, I believe that it was twenty some odd shows uh, between mm-hmm. all of the indies, right? And, yeah, you know everything that went on this weekend. So I, I you know, I, you just have to admire the the guys and girls that went out there and busted their asses this weekend. Yeah, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're all fans. Exactly. You know? yep. So yep. Um, I know that I'm grateful for every single person that competed in a match this weekend. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's let's just keep this trend going. Let's just continue to have fun. Yeah, and let's do the damn thing. Simon Street, any final words, man? Uh, <clears throat> kind of along the lines of what uh, Sin City Steve was saying, um, but I'll take it a little step further. I think that it's important for a lot of people that you know uh, try to expand your horizons. Um, there's other promotions out there, or even in your local town. Mm-hmm. You know, look at a lot of these promotions whether they be major promotions indie whatnot look at them because these people are pushing hard you know they are traveling and you know working for slices of pizza and you know sleeping in their cars and you never know that that could be the last or, or, or that could be the next star yeah and so if you get an opportunity i challenge everybody out there to go and support your local wrestling promotions please these people all they want to do is entertain you. Yeah. And and, yep. and and before they get the big checks, they always are putting their best foot forward. So that's all I really got to say. No doubt. King Lucky, any final words, man? Yeah, it was a great week of wrestling. Um, I really enjoyed it. 
you know, the reason why I do the Mania trip is because it is just that great. Yeah. You know, and uh, being in New York City and and hanging out there and seeing all the different wrestling fans, it was cool. Yeah. And uh, had my Vegas bad boy hat on and uh, got asked a lot about it. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, shout out to a, everybody who hit it was us cool. Up. Met a lot of couple, uh, a lot of, met a lot of people from different places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, London and things like that. And yeah. so it was really cool to connect with uh, different people from different parts of the the world. No doubt, Matt Michaels. Uh, yeah, the internet sucks. <laughs> <laughs> just simple the internet sucks yeah. y'all are fickle i know i'm the jerk but y'all are fickle <laughs> uh smartville sucks uh if, you suck i'll take that <laughs> yeah well um you know it, it, it goes down to this um everyone just bitches and moans and complains about how long WrestleMania is and blah, 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 fucking blah. The fact of the matter is, is that get over it. It's an all day fucking event. Guess what? It's about money. (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. It's about fucking money. Mm -hmm. So in the end, um, all of you people who think, Oh, they need to shut it. Make it two days to two different brands. Go fuck yourselves. (laughs) Because that's the dumbest thing. Is that I've with ever lube heard. or without lube? <laughs> oh, that's that's fucking just that's raw dog fucking nasty shit right there. Wow, sandpaper hands. <laughs> well, technically, it was a two day event because the shit ended at twelve thirty. <laughs> true. <laughs> that is true. Well, no, technically it ended at nine thirty. Oh. Oh, we're going to play time zones here. <laughs> for those of you listening in the Midwest, it ended at 11.30. And for those of you on mountain time, mountain fucking time. <laughs> for fuck's sake. What is mountain fucking time? Um, you know, it's... Al- alone time with the lady? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those things where, you know what? It's always going to be something that is centered around. Um, it's bigger than it ever has been. Uh, it's never going back. So, yeah. you know what? Just fucking let it be and enjoy the fucking show. Yeah. Because, you know, you forget that when you look back at it, if uh, you go back uh, next year, will be, uh, well, we could we can even go back to uh, 21 years ago with WrestleMania here in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. At WrestleMania Nine, right? Caesar's Palace. Yeah, just look at that card. Just yep. look at that card up and yep. down, yeah. And, and go. You want to go back to that? <laughs> Do you really want to go back yeah. to that? Riser right. stands <laughs> outside of the. Well, it, it, that's not even. That's not the point. The point is, is that you know the show was you know within a three hour time frame, yeah. and what did you get from that show? Nothing. There's there's nothing that stands out on that show as spectacular. Mm-hmm. Cunt Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that's that's it. Enjoy the fucking you know enjoy it. Enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Well, hey, I, I just want to say that it it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. It's to have all of that going on in one setting. It was just. Where do you go? Where do I? Where do I choose? Is this? And then be, seeing a, being around a lot of fans, there's, there's nothing like walking down the street and and it's like, hey man, you're going, you're going, yeah, we're going. What do you think? What are you gonna? And it was constantly that, um, just a community of of wrestling fans. That's that's what it's all about, you know. And is enjoying the uh, the 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 event, enjoying the wrestlers like Sin City Steve talked about it wrong, you know, enjoying what these guys what these guys do. And um, and that's kind of my only beef. Why sometimes I hate the Raw after Mania when we have to start chanting, you know, fuck you and all this. It's to me it just begins really a little disrespectful. I know that's now the new theme after what they did to Roman last year, but they just should just cut all that out. You know, just come on. I mean, they, the guys they didn't just really do anything. They did when when. Um, Oh, when, my last year. 
No, no talking about this. Talking about this year. Talking about last night. Oh, right. you talking about when, after the bait and switch? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So that's where they got. They was like, they, from that point, they but started they beach balls. Yeah, there was beach balls. Uh, there were yeah. chants. They were just all of a sudden they they hated everything because of that particular. Come on, you knew it was going to be something. I mean, now it's becoming disrespectful by by that point. What are but, we talking? What what bait and switch? What are we talking about? We had raw. Are you? Did you not watch raw? No, I watched raw. What are we talking about? You're, All we're saying is bait and switch. What what are we talking about? We're, we're talking about when you had the the, the Seth and so Kofi. My, the winner takes all. Winner and then takes the all. Bart came in and interfered. Right. It's like a bait and switch. Like here you go. Oh, but we're gonna take it away from you. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck ever thought that was actually gonna happen? That's the whole point. So why are you going to sit there now but, and, and, but, and destroy the entire show Michaels. because of that? That's the whole. Matt Michaels, his but, mic is off. But that's but, the whole point. But Mr. Michaels, I I really wanted that match. I waited all day to to see <laughs> Kofi Kingston and Seth Rollins. <laughs> Anyways, who the fuck thought? I, what the fuck? Like, how can you be upset? <laughs> but but why are you really be upset? I'm confused. I'm why are you so angry? <laughs> I'm confused at what I'm confused what you're saying now. Oh. I, <laughs> did you break the chair? Technically, the chair was already broken. <laughs> wait, but the, wait, no, I want to know what the how. I mean, how did wait, how is anyone where where could be pissed? We're, we're agreeing cut. with you, but the fans were. Upset at that, or are you saying you didn't see that, or no? I just don't understand why the fans would fucking get but upset. But they were at it. Well, because they fans should... are entitled. That's yeah, why. Well, that's and that's why you don't give them what they want, Vince. <laughs> but you know what, Sammy, Sammy Zane tried to tell us. That's Did true. Did we listen? That's true. Did we listen? That's true. Ungrateful villains. I gotta give Sammy his props. When I was listening, yeah, I, that I was like, I was. Like, like, yeah. was perf. Perf. Perfect. You know who else kind of did almost the same type of Perfect. line? Yeah. Hmm. Johnny Impact. Kind of <laughs> said along the same lines. Well, hey, that's it, guys. Listen, um, Tony Gunn's coming up next. It's been exciting. And we want to always remind you to go to our social media site. Just put in Vegas Bad Boys. That's with the Z. Again, that's on IG. That's on Facebook. That's on Twitter. Follow us. You get to... Uh, See all of the interviews that we're we're gonna have uh, up and coming. We got a show we're gonna be starting to promote as well. We're gonna need to start talking about that. That's real huge, big show coming into Vegas. A lot's gonna be going on. So until then, we're gonna go right into our special guest of the hour, Mr. O V W Heavyweight Champion Shotgun Tony Gun. How are you? Doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Let's yeah. get right into it. Yeah, so uh, you got about 15 years in the business, and uh, just kind of want to take it, you know, all the way back. What brought, what got you into wrestling? Man, it's, it's just one of those things where um, I really didn't start watching wrestling until about 97, 98. I was a ninth or 10th grader in high school, and my buddies kind of got me into it. They were like, hey, uh, you know, let's uh, – you should watch this WWF because that's what it was called at the time. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. So I turned it on. I was like, whoa, what is this stuff? This is pretty awesome. <laughs> and then, you know, that that was the Attitude Era. That was Stone Cold, The Rock, Chris Jericho, you know, all those guys, Triple H. And uh, I was just, I was kind of hooked and glued ever since. Uh, but, my like, I come from a small town in Rector, Arkansas, 2,000 people. And out of my niche group of friends, I was the only one that really had like a, you know, a satellite. Back then, you had to order the pay per views, you right. know, like fifty. Mm -hmm. It was like what forty, fifty bucks a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, all my buddies would chip in and stuff. They would come over and watch the pay per view every month at, at you know my parents' house. And then somehow we got the broad idea. I was like, hey, let's uh, let's wrestle before the pay-per-view. <laughs> Don't try this so, at home. <laughs> you know, it's just like how stupid teenagers would think. You know, hey, let's do this. Uh, so we got my mattress, my sister's mattress, you know, my the spare bedroom mattress. We threw it down in the basement, and we just 
beat the crap out of each other before the pay-per-view started, basically. <laughs> so you basically didn't even realize, because I know I trained um, I trained at UPW in the early 2000s, and one of the things that I would do is when I would, uh, I, I literally took my bed apart, put a mattress down, and I would just, you know, stand there for 30 minutes just consistently taking back bumps onto the mattress. So you essentially, you guys were already preparing you for a career and you had no idea yeah that was weird we were you know we we're just being dumb teenagers having fun yeah and uh you know just doing whatever we you know you're not, you never know what the future holds at that time but uh <clears throat> but anyways we uh we ended up uh graduating to the to the garage where we moved everything upstairs from the basement to the garage because it was a bigger space <laughs> and then that way we, we were able to set up like commentary tables and we had our own entrance and they made our own title belts and stuff out of cardboard. It was crazy. So the first, uh, so the first question on that phase of it would be, okay, what song did you come out to, and what was your basic character at that point? Uh, we we, <laughs> what we did, we actually wrote our own shows, <laughs> and we had our own commentary people, and we would just pretty much <laughs> steal from uh, WWF characters like. We had we had we had a JR commentary commentary guy. We had you know Jerry King Lawler commentary guy, but they were nice. named something else. I can't I can't remember what they were. That's so awesome. Uh, but I I was different characters. Like I think I had one like ninja character called Mystical or something. You know? <laughs> Mystical. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah. Don't ask me. I have no idea. <laughs> and I I think the name but, uh, the name that you had was really cool too for the organization. I don't want to steal your thunder, but uh, you could let everybody know what it was called. <laughs> what, what, the name of our company? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the name of our backyard company was DHW, yeah. Down Home Wrestling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, that, man. Awesome. I love that. that all about, good, all yeah. about some down home wrestling, yeah. So uh, and be but no, we 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 were we had different characters and stuff. So we're like we would wrestle three or four matches each and just be a different character every time and <laughs> you know whatnot. So we just had fun with it. And did did you film any of that at that point? Uh, at that point, yeah, we started breaking out the video ca camera, and that was actually uh, we had the old school camera that goes you know, that went on your shoulder, right? You know, so that that, that big camera. <laughs> but uh, we did that for a little bit, and I was like, hey, let's let's actually build a wrestling ring because, you know, I lived on a farm at 200 and some odd acres. And I asked my parents, I was like, Hey, can we build a wrestling ring on the property? And for some reason they said, sure. <laughs> uh, you know, so, <laughs> so they agreed and my dad actually helped me build it. And we used like re uh, what we use like tree trunks for the ring post. We use like cable and rope, uh, cable and garden hose for the rope, and <laughs> nice. we had awesome. like box springs. And we, we had, you know, we had the platform and everything. Like we had it all. You could actually do springboards or you know superplexes or everything. Like you could do it all. And and like we like we didn't just go out there and do stuff. Like we we actually practiced as well too. Like there was like eight or ten of us. And we would go out there and make a line and do like hip toss drill and arm drag drill and body slam drill. Like we would watch the wrestlers where they put their hands and things like that and go out there and just replicate what they did and just kind of learn, learn how to do it. So at that point then, um, your parents obviously allowed this. Your parents were obviously, um, very supportive, uh, they were, I would assume, you know, parents who um, your friends got along with too, because you know, <laughs> this is, the guns over here have you know <laughs> a wrestling ring. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, what was that? Like, what was that atmosphere? Was you know, was your your mom and dad involved in any a process of that in terms of like, you know, helping you guys out with like, you know, giving you ideas, holding the camera, making costumes, doing anything in that aspect? Or was it just like No Not really. They just gave us free you know, they just gave us free range to, to build it and they said, Oh, well if you're gonna build it you gotta keep it looking nice. We don't want a junked up thing on our property or whatever. So we had to keep it nice and but you know, no, they weren't really hands on as far as they just let us go out there and do it and pretty much having fun. To them, it was just kids being kids, right? Basically, mm -hmm. you know, my mom, you know, my mom always said, "Go out there, but don't 
don't kill each other. You know, right. <laughs> that, that was her, that was her advice. <laughs> Which is interesting too, because in a way your mom like actually gave you the key to wrestling. <laughs> Go out there and don't right. kill each yeah. other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what's out there. Like, I don't know if I if I would have been doing what I'm doing now. So that's kind of it's kind of strange to think about. Yeah. So, Gun, uh, I had a quick question for you. So, you know, during this process, sure. and you're, you know, building up, uh, you know, your brand per se. Um, did it start growing beyond just you and the original friends that you had? I mean, was there like people at school asking questions like, Hey, what's going on? I mean, did you garner an audience? Um, it was really just for us, but some you know, some friends did come out and kind of watch and things of that nature, which was pretty cool. But yeah, like we, like on campus, on the school campus, we were known for the, for the kids that had the wrestling ring and were the wrestlers. So. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so that was, that was kind of cool in a sense. And, and we had fun with that. Uh, but you know, that was, that was around, you know, 10th grade and then time rolls by and then, you know, you, you get to the point where you're like, you're at that age where you start liking girls a little bit, a little bit more and you want to start doing cooler things. So you want to wrestle uh, pretty much. Yeah. So pretty much all my buddies, all, yeah, all my buddies grew out of it. I was pretty much the only, the only kid that didn't. Gotcha. So did you, then uh, did you, was the ring at that point, was the ring still up? Did you like at that point do like rope drills or anything? Like, did you still have that passion for it or was that the end of the ring and like, let's you know, uh, get it off the property? It, it wasn't, it wasn't the end of it for me. Like it, it was still, it was actually still up maybe within the last four or five years, I think my dad asked me, he goes, Hey, do you care if I, I, <laughs> I, I plow down the ring cause he was making some area for a shooting range or something. Gotcha. I was like, yeah. So he asked my permission, which was kind of cool. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah. You know, because that started me off. So, but yeah, within the last four or five years, it was actually demolished. Wow. Uh, but no, I, I kind of kept doing it. Like, you know, all my friends grew out of it, but like I'd have family that come over for like Thanksgiving and Christmas, like my cousin and stuff. We would go out there and play around and wrestle. And nice. I would always go out there and too and just practice stuff. Uh, and then I ended up graduating high school in 2001. And then I ended up going to my first ever wrestling show. It was uh, with Memphis Championship Wrestling at uh, MCW. That was back in Memphis, Tennessee, where uh, where WWF was developmental for them. Right. Uh, before OVW was. Right. And which I really didn't know what MCW was, anyways. But I knew that there was a big show coming to Jonesboro, Arkansas, which is like 40 minutes down the road from where I lived. And the the main draw or the main event that night was Triple H and Kurt Angle, and that's uh, back when Kurt Angle still had hair. <laughs> yeah, and, and so did, and so was, did Triple was, H. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and uh, Kurt Angle was the the uh, WWF Heavyweight Champion at the time. And I just remember being at that show and just like just the energy throughout the whole night and just listening to the crowd and listening to the reaction and just sitting there. I was like, man, I was like, I, you know, I, t I remember telling myself, I was like, I want to be the reason why this is happening. Right. I want to be the reason why these people, why this, why these people are making this sound, you know, I want to be that reason. And, and from that moment on, I was like, I want to do this. So that, that was like the, the turning point for me as far as like, okay, I'm, I'm going to pursue this. Do you, do, do you remember feeling that, before the main event so did that live atmosphere and the undercard have that same resonance with you where you were like you know this is you know something i like and then the main event hits and you're just like that's it i'm doing this uh, i mean i mean obviously the highlight the big build was was those two that was the marquee but there there was other matches on the show because at that time uh i think Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee, I think they did a tag match or something against Bobby Eaton or somebody else. Uh, and then you had, uh, I think the cat was there in Victoria. <laughs> and then I'm trying to think who else you had. Uh, uh, Spanky was there, which was Brian right. Kendrick. Kendrick and would have been there, Daniel right. Bryant. And Daniel Bryan was there as well, too. Did, uh, um, which obviously. Did, did, go um, ahead. I'm sorry to cut you off there, but um, do you know at that time, did uh, Cena get to mcw at that time 
No, I don't think he was at MCW. Okay, so he went straight from UPW to Ohio Valley then. Yeah, 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 because, yeah, I don't think he was ever down there. I I don't remember it anyways. I just remember him being at OBW. Right. Uh, but no, I just remember watching that show, and I, and I was like, I was like, ooh, oh, this is this is awesome. But it really set in because the place just exploded when you know the WWF name names came out, and I was like, man, this is this 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 is what I want to do. When you started, you know, really getting into it, were you more of a heel guy or were you more of a, a babyface guy? Man, I don't, to be honest with you, I was. This is before my beard, I, you know, because I started I started training in. 2002 or three uh with um with Derek king Derek king actually brought me into the business okay uh yeah. but i'll get into that story in a little bit but no like i was i wasn't a heel i was a baby face uh and i looked straight up clean cl- clean cut baby face too i don't think i could pull off a hill <laughs> i had i had such the baby face so no i for my first like good half of my career i always played the baby face i never i never played the heel so I think um, I think what Lucky was getting at though was when you were drawn to the wrestling, were you drawn to the the heel or were you drawn to the baby face as what you know attracted you uh, to what you would like to do? I, I I didn't really I didn't really have a preference to be honest. I just uh, no like it, neither one like heel or baby face like um, I wasn't really drawn. Uh, one way or the other, I was just I just like the entertainment value uh, of everything. Gotcha. You know, and also too, you know, as you started, uh, you know, kind of developing your craft and learning, obviously, you know, um, what you started developing. Did you identify with yourself early on as you know what type of style, um, you know, whether it be grappler, submission, striker? And then also, too, once you answer that, you know, is it match up for what you are today? Um, no and no. Because, <laughs> 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 like, like, when I started, like, the, 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 there's three people that got me into professional wrestling that really, when they came on the screen, my eyes were glued. Mm-hmm. And that's besides The Rock and Stone Cold. That's an obvious, you know, everybody with eyes were glued when they came on, came on the screen. But there were three other people that really got me into it. And the first one is Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really love Kurt Angle's style, his charisma, what he did inside the ring and, and outside the ring. He's just a great performer. Right. And then the second, the second person was Ken Shamrock. Uh, yeah. I love his, you know, his UFC, his MMA background, and what he brought to the table as far as for his character in the ring. And I also identified with Ken Shamrock a, a lot as well too, where, you know, he had that snap personality right and i kind of i kind of had that as well too i have a short fuse so something you know i, I pop off that such the slightest <laughs> thing so i so i so i could re, i could relate with that character uh a lot and then the third person uh is al snow actually um because i remember as a kid i was like i remember watching this guy and he's like at that time he was putting himself through tables he'd wrestle the head he did these crazy vignettes and I remember my buddies were like, they were like, why do you like this guy? I was like, I was like, man, how can you not? I was like, he does right. all this stuff, and he's crazy, and he goes out here, and the crowd eats it up along with me. And I was like, to go out there and do what he does is like, you have to be a genius, whether you're crazy or not. <laughs> you know? Right? Yeah. yeah. I got a I got a two part yeah. question for you. So let me ask you this: You mentioned Angle, and so how do you feel? Who do you think he should close it out with uh, at WrestleMania? for his final opponent oh man i don't know um hopefully not baron corbin <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> everybody I think that's the general I, consensus I, I don't i actually i don't think it's going to be they're going to they're going to do a little swerve uh, sure, I, yeah. I, I honest i honestly think it's probably going to be cena it should be right yeah yeah it makes more you know, sense because because cena you know was brought in for his first time against Angle, so this would be kind of like just a just a cool moment. Yeah, but if we if moment. if we really want to get there and bring it full circle, we'd have to bring back Sean Stasiak. <laughs> that was his first uh, pay per view appearance and the first appearance in the WWF. 
uh, for Kurt Angle, and it was against uh, Meat. <laughs> <laughs> meat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I forgot about Meat. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think everyone has. I think that was yeah. the first time his name yeah. has been mentioned in quite some time. <laughs> you might yeah. have just resurrected I, I, I him. I've seen it, too. I liked him for a second as a kid because he always came out with girls. Right. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So. so, and and getting into that a little bit, you know, on those particular guys. Um, with Kurt, there was obviously, at that time, being 2001, being your first time seeing him, um, and he, if he was champion, then I believe that would have been right after 9-11. So it was at that peak. It was at that height of, you know, the, the American, the all American hero. Um, mm-hmm. was that something, did you, did you do anything in high school in terms of like sports like wrestling or football or anything? And did you know that, you know, other than his reputation of being an Olympic wrestler, did you see at that time, did you see anything that he had done and did you, ever have any kind of thoughts of, you know, learning Greco Roman? Um, you know, I was I was involved with sports uh throughout my whole entire childhood in high school. Um, you know, I played basketball, football, tennis, track. Nice. Um yeah. I think that I think that's it. Football. I can't remember if I said football or not. But no, I actually I did I wish because from where I'm at in the south in Arkansas, wrestling's not really big in that area right because it's more of a it's more of a northern sport but uh i wish they would have had that because that's something i feel like i would i would have done and would have been would have been good at right uh, but yeah. no so i didn't i don't i don't have that wrestling background i didn't have that opportunity to to wrestle uh so and also i didn't know anything about kurt angle either until until he came into the wwf you know because at that time you know there really you know social media really was non-existent right. youtube was just was just getting big so you really didn't know what was out there unless you saw it on the tv right yeah uh so yeah so yeah i didn't know anything about angle until he came on screen so for your championship you actually beat a hall of famer with impact which was abyss tell me a little bit about that match that had to be awesome yeah that was uh that was crazy it was it was a crazy night to say the least uh because at that point in time, I was also in another storyline with with another guy at OVW right, fighting yeah. for the num- for the num- for the number one contendership, uh, Adam Revolver, and it played out to where he had some paperwork or something where I had to have that number one contender match early in that night before I fought Abyss if I won, which I won obviously. Yeah. And then yeah, immediately like I think Adam and I we had like a fifteen. 15- 20 minute match and then immediately after the match abyss came out and jumped me and said you're having your your title match right now so i went another 20 minutes with abyss i literally went 40 minutes in the ring with back-to-back two matches <laughs> uh but it, it was a typical david and goliath story where i was just kind of down and out uh from the previous match and he just kind of added insult to injury and you know, it was just one of those things where he he gave me two choke slams and went to, went for the third one, knocked his hand away, and gave him the kill shot. Kill shot, that's, that's boom. Re- that's the really yeah, click click boom. That's really the only thing I could do to him, and that's all it took, which was nice. Uh, but hearing but hearing it hearing it announced that you know your new OVW heavyweight champion uh, Tony Gunn was such a cool thing to hear and such a cool moment for me. Um, and not only that, that was the first time I was actually the number one contender for the heavyweight title as well, too. So. Wow. Well, and that I guess that will lead us kind of into that part of your story, which is that you um, initially, after seeing the match at MCW, you then, as I understand it, um, after going to college, you went to college, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, your parents always say, go, you know, go to college or whatever. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to go to college, and but I still want to pursue this wrestling. And I'll kind of give you, I, I have, I have very bad luck with the developmental system, and I'll kind of tell you real quick. Uh, so, you know, WWF was developmental with MCW. I talked to uh, a guy named, uh, what was his, the owner? Uh, Terry Golden was the owner, and I talked to him. He's like, 
beginner class is X amount of dollars. I think it was a thousand dollars or something. Right. So I save up my money, working at a furniture store, save up my money. Boom. I pay him like a couple of weeks before class. And cause I showed it, you know, I paid everything up front cause I want to show that I'm, I want to do this. Right. And then a week before class, WWF pulls out and sends everybody to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, for, for OVW. Right. And then, Memphis just shut their doors like the day that it happened. Yeah. So here I am, here I am at a thousand dollars, zero training, nothing, and I'm kind of up a creek without a paddle. So you basically learned your first lesson about wrestling: never, <laughs> never up pay. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Never pay up front. <laughs> right. That was that was lesson number one. That's that's amazing. Yeah. And and during that time, what what were you studying in college before you hooked up with this? Uh, I was, I, I knew I wanted to be a, a teacher and a coach, a uh, phys ed teacher, PE and health and a coach. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's what I started going to uh, school for, to be, to be in that field. And then you, you do this where you, you get, you know, essentially screwed out of a thousand and, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that happens, but then you end up hooking up with Derek King. How did that come about? It was uh, one of those things where, I, I, I kind of forgot how I got hooked up with Derek King, because um, I started training with with someone else that that broke away from Memphis Championship Wrestling, another wrestler, and he brought me to a show, and then I kind of touched base with Derek, and I was like, hey Derek, I, you know, I want to do this, and I have no idea what to do, how to go about it, or whatever. So he's like, I'll oh, just listen to me, kid. You know, so right. he kind of took me under his wing. He kind of took me under his wing, trained me, showed me the ropes, and kind of taught me everything. And kind of, you know, got my my feet wet, so to speak. So, um, so at that so, time, so at that time, being like the new kid and and kind of getting your feet wet and stuff, was he a a mentor towards you, to you, or did he take it upon himself to? Um, you know, kind of use you in terms of, you know, I'll show you this, but, you know, carry my ring bags or, you know, play any like, uh, no, he was, no, so he, he was, wasn't he like was, that. He, he was good he, to you. He was, yeah, he was a mentor. We, we ran the road together. Like, uh, we were pretty inseparable, inseparable for like three or four years. Uh, so, so we, we, we became best of friends. We still talk to this day. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, he, yeah, he didn't take advantage or anything of that nature. Uh, but so he, he, you know, he, he showed me the ropes, got me on the indie scene in the Arkansas, Tennessee, and Missouri area. And I did other stuff as well, too. And then finally, I was like, you know, I'm going to finish my college, so that way I get my degree, and then I'm going to move to Louisville, you know, to pursue, pursue this with developmental. So, you know, I'd call up Rip Rogers because he was the head trainer at the time, still is. Uh, I'm like, hey, Rip, you know, I want to move up. To Louisville and train with you, blah blah blah. He's like, who trained you? I was like, Derek King. He's like, oh, I'm gonna have to retrain you then. Yikes! Yeah, so, but he was just he was just ribbon because he he knew Derek King because Derek <laughs> used to go to I guess OBW uh, uh, for a bit, anyways. Uh, so he, he knew Derek very well. Uh, but anyways, he goes, yeah, come on up. He goes, class is X amount of dollars away. I think this was the intermediate class was probably another thousand or 1200 or whatever. And so I move up like December of 06 or 07, somewhere around there. I can't really remember my years. Uh, so I move up like December, save my money. And then I, you know, I'm getting ready to pay rip and Danny Davis for class. Uh, you know, I talk, I talked to him about it and same scenario, but this time, like you said earlier, I learned my lesson. I didn't pay the money, you know, because <laughs> because class hasn't started yet. But mm -hmm. I I I, tra I crap you not. Two weeks before class started, uh, WWF pulled out and sent everybody to Florida with FCW. And I was like, what the crap is going on? I was like, I try to go to Memphis. They shut the doors. I literally just moved to Louisville. They shut the doors. I was like, screw this. I'm not moving to Florida. Um, so and you get, you get and, the best timing. <laughs> yeah right so like you know if you are if you ever wonder who killed the developmental area it was well, tony gunn that's you know what and that's and that's that should have been your first gimmick the development or the territory killer tony oh, gunn that the territory yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so that yeah it would have, would have been a good gimmick right there so and then when that happened is that 
at that point, how long did you kind of take time off and did you just take up regular jobs? I mean, what filled your time? I was, you know, literally I was really, really frustrated because I, I scraped together, I scraped together everything I could to move here for ODW. And then just to have that happen to me again, it was just like, man, I was like, it just, it, 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 it beat me down a lot. Right. And I was like, you know what? I, and, and OVW was still there after WWF left, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not about to pay any money or train here because I know Memphis shut their doors. Is OVW going to do the same thing? Right. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take some time off, kind of recollect myself and, you know, and, and work things out. Uh, and at that time I did get a good job as a, you know, as a manager of a health club making a lot of money, but yeah. Over the time, a couple of years go by, I was just I was just unhappy, and it's because I wasn't wrestling. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't. In you weren't doing what you wanted to do. Yeah, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I gotta get rid of this frustration. I gotta, I gotta keep pursuing what I want, what I'm wanting to do. And OVW was still there, so I ended up talking to a a, a guy named Johnny Spade. He was a wrestler at OVW, and yeah. we became friends. And, he got my foot in the door and introduced me to Danny. He's like, Hey, uh, this is about 2010 or 11. He was like, Hey, uh, here's Tony Gunn. Can you please give him a dark match? And, and if you like him, you know, can we bring him on? So Danny's like, sure. Gives me a dark match. My first match there was with, uh, Raul Lamada. Okay. And I've never, I've never been under like lights like that, you know, ring yeah. lights. Yep. And, I, and I wrestled the same, style that I did like on, you know, indie shows, but then going there, wrestling the same, I got so blown up because I wasn't used to that heat. Right. Oh, yeah. yep. it, it, it killed me. Yep. It killed me, but I got through the match, but I was breathing heavy. <laughs> but, uh, is that, but anyways, I get it, back to the back. Was that, what? was that at that point, did you realize, okay, 10,000 squats a day? Yeah. It's like, okay, I got out my cardio and get used to yep. the heat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, but uh, I get to the back and Danny's like, you got blown up, kid? I'm like, yeah, a little bit. He goes, well, he goes, come back next week. He nice. goes, I, he goes, I see, I see you have something. So he invited me back. So now, you know, a huge partnership just was announced uh, with OVW and Impact Wrestling, right? So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, well, who's somebody that you would want to face on their roster right now that you're licking your chops to say, you know what, I'm going to give that SOB the kill shot? You know, to be honest with you, I'd like to meet up with Sammy again. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that'd be awesome. You, you know, we, we had our OVW Impact one not only event. I don't know if you guys got to see that or not, uh, but that that was a hellacious match. Yes. And, Sammy and I, we I think we were in the ring a little over 32 minutes. And tore the house down. Wow. Yeah, tore the house down, and we just went out there. It wasn't a wrestling match. Like we went out there and just beat the crap out of each other, and and it was a challenge to me too because I've never been challenged like that as far as having somebody, you know, of of that stature or, or of that caliber inside the ring where. You know, you have some wrestlers where, you know, we're working together and there's some that's like, okay, if you don't do something, I'm just going to take advantage of the situation. Right. You know, so he, he was one of those guys, not doing it to be a dick or be mean. It's just no. that's that's what you do when you're on that level, you know. Right. Uh, well, you get yourself over. Do you, do, and do you, I mean, to that point, I mean, you guys match up really well, by the way. I mean, I, I can't think of a better matchup in terms of, you know, styles, presence, and characters is that then that realization of man you know take that ring psychology and just go with that flow and let him be the ring general and just keep up with what he's what he's doing yeah because it was it was a big take and give uh where he would do some stuff and i was like no 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 you know we're not doing this and i would you know i would i would come back with something you know Uh, so it was one of those things as a take and give, and and like I said, we beat the hell out of each other, and it w- it was a good matchup. And I, I really, as far as my wrestling career, fifteen years, I've wrestled with a lot of names, I've had a lot of good matches, but that by far was the best experience that I've had in the ring, uh, just because the level of, of of realism that was in the ring, right. and and the level of um, 
of uh, competition inside the ring as well too. And I, I really liked it. And I, that after that match, that changed my mindset of how I perceive wrestling now. Like I, I I'm kind of changing my demeanor in the ring, and I'm kind of changed my thought process as far as how how I see and view going into matchups. Right. And that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's um, almost the gift that he, he gave you, you know, by working with him. You <laughs> yeah. know. Um, with, with that, do you think that um, the character building and the ring psychology is something that you're, you know, you have been obviously – um, over the, the years kind of learning about that and building that and making yourself better. Do you think that anyone who's listening to this, who's getting into wrestling now, who sees the high spots and seeing people getting over on high spots, do you encourage those people and do you encourage some of the, the young guys coming into OVW, for instance, while you're there, do you kind of take them and, and kind of, you know, mentor them yourself into that direction. Because like Kofi Kingston is a great example of a guy who came in in a high level and had all these great high spots and the crowd got behind him because of the high spots, not necessarily because of the character. Now, after establishing a character, everyone's going nuts, but it took him 11 years to get to that point. Right. Has it, you know, has it, is it starting, is the gates finally starting opening in your mind going, aha, uh -huh. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things like uh, in, in professional wrestling, like okay, the moves are cool, the spots are cool, and, that, and that's what you learn first. But finding out who you are in the ring, and then finding out what works and what doesn't work, that's a totally different story because that takes years to figure out. Right. And it took me a long time to figure that out because I didn't I didn't have the proper training or the proper school to go to. I was pretty much on the indie scene, lost for a lot of years, uh, you know. But when I came here under Al Snow, Al Al taught me so much as far as psychology and and what to do in and out of the ring and when to do it, and why to do it, why not to do it, you know. So little things like that, like I, I'm more of an old school type person where Wes is more and more storytelling, more psychology right. versus all the high spots. Cause first off you only have so many bumps. You only have one body. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're doing these high spots week in and week out, your body's eventually going to break on you. Right. And also too, like, like you said with Kofi, like he did all those high spots in the beginning and stuff. And, and a lot of people do that nowadays and the crowd pops for it. Right. That's fine, but uh, but but to me, in my opinion, I think wrestling of that nature, uh, you know, like the ricochet and stuff like that. I think stuff like that is short lived. Right. Yes. It's very. I think that it, it. I think it gets old quick. Yep. And if you don't have any, if you don't have any character behind what you're doing with that, then you're not going to have a very long run, or you're going to get lost in shuffle. And I think that's what a lot of wrestling nowadays is what's happening is because they don't and they don't have that character they don't they don't have that i'm not going to say psychology but they don't just don't have that developed character inside right. the ring uh they don't have they can't, oh cool moves but they can't pull any emotion from the crowd if you can't pull any emotion from the crowd you're really not going to sell or, or help your product out so you know i'm actually going to change it up just a little bit because you know part of us interviewing people is we we want to know a little bit more about you outside of, you uh -huh. know, the shotgun persona. So, you know, sure. what are some things that, um, you know, that you like to do that, that people wouldn't, would, wouldn't know looking you up on the internet or, you know, only that your, your close circle of friends and family know about you? Man, um, <laughs> kind of hard because I put everything out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the but, chicken coop. You know, <laughs> yeah, like uh, I to, and to be honest with you, man, I don't, I don't, I don't have chickens anymore. Really? Uh, I, yeah, I got, I got rid of them a couple months ago because I was just, I was just kind of, I got really busy and I wasn't giving them the attention that they needed, and I felt bad, so oh, I yeah. ended up giving them, uh, giving them up to a farm. Uh, but, but yeah, I wish I still had them because I really enjoyed getting the eggs and just going out there and just watching them peck around. It was hilarious. 
Yeah. Uh, but but anyways, yeah. So I, I had that, not anymore. But I'm I'm a big fitness advocate. Like I, I I live in the gym. I love the gym. I love learning new things about you know about fitness. And uh, within the the past, I say three or four months, I started a new style of training or incorporating different things, uh, such as like using Indian clubs. Yes. Oh, wow. like, yeah, that's pretty um, cool. uh, mace bars and stuff like that. And actually, wow. uh, Al Snow turned me on to that. He kind of showed that to me. I was like, man, this is really awesome because I have, I have shoulder instability okay. and using the Indian clubs and the mace bars really help strengthen my shoulder joints, those smaller, smaller rotator cuff muscles. And it's, it's made, it's gave me a stronger core and stronger stability in my shoulders. Uh, so I incorporate that a lot with my with my new style of, uh, of, of fitness and things of that nature. Uh, other than that, like I mean, I'm I'm pretty much a hermit with my wife. We 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 chill here <laughs> at the house. We watch TV. Uh, we go out with our buddies every now and then to hit up different restaurants and you know just the normal the normal boring stuff like that. Do you, uh, do but, you I have... do, but I do. Huh? Go ahead. But I do love Sunday, though, because Sunday is cheat meal day, and that's my favorite day of the week. That's what I was uh, about to I, ask you about. Uh, you man, got some pretty epic it, cheat meals. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I have to, man, because it's like, you know, you're so strict throughout the week, and, it, like, I look forward to Sunday when I, when cheat meal hits. Like, I wake up Sunday morning, I'm like, cheat meal day. I got I got something I want you to settle for us right here sure. on the show. You love donuts, Tell yeah. me who has the better donuts, Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy Kreme? Man. Drum roll. You're not gonna like you're not gonna like you're not gonna like either answer. Oh, <laughs> He's neither say one neither. of them. He's gonna say neither. <laughs> because because I've I've had crisp I don't like Krispy Kreme. Okay. Because because it is too much it's too much sugar. Like the whole yep. donut is glazed. I don't like that. Yeah. It's too much. And then I'm to be honest with you, I've never had Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. Oh well So, so I just... can't so honestly I can't I can't answer that. What I usually get there's there's a local place here uh called Sugar and Spice. Okay. And their donuts are amazing here in Louisville, Kentucky. And there's another place too called um Mr. Mr. Chan's or something of that nature. Or no, it's called King's Donuts. King's Donuts. Okay. And those are really good as well too. And every now and then I just get them from Kroger or the Thornton's gas station. Those are really good as well too. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite yeah. kind of donut? What's that? What's your favorite kind? My favorite are the Creamfield Long Johns and just the regular the regular chocolate donut. Oh yeah, that's, okay. that's good stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not into like the like they have some crazy ones with like fruity pebbles and stuff on. I'm like, nah, I'm not. <laughs> Them gourmet donuts, golden or go, golden grams on. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not into that. I was like, just give me the regular stuff. Yeah, I think that started out west with all those different cereals yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm not into that. It's that but, like, donut I, shit. W- but here's my goal though. Like my goal is to work up to a dozen. Like really? I started out with four. I started wow. out with four. Then I inch up to five or six. Now I'm up to eight. So Jeez. I, I'm getting there. I'm that's getting ambitious, there. man. I mean, just just <laughs> yeah. broadly saying, I mean, that's that's. I don't even know if I, on a good day, could eat seven. <laughs> yeah, and I do it in one sitting. Dang. Oh wow. Ooh. Okay, time out. Time out. Let's go to this this donut eating because now I'm, my brain is trying to image this. What the hell else are you doing while eating? All these, are you watching something? Or are you just <laughs> you looking in the mirror? I mean, what the hell are you doing? I need to know because that that's that's dedication. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sitting there shoveling it in, man. That's it. <laughs> what do you like? Okay, nice. okay. I'm gonna say something. I don't give a shit if there's female listeners. Are you like that fat girl that eats all those goddamn donuts and then throws up in a jar or something like that? That's crazy. <laughs> I do not. No, shit. I do not do that. No, do not God. do that. There's gonna be some girl that's gonna give me flack. Like, how dare you? I'm just saying. Like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, Tony, he's been divorced twice. You <laughs> you can tell why. <laughs> yeah. kinda, look, you kinda uh, understand. Look, look, look. Just like how you know developmental. You know, I'm develop, developmentally challenged when it comes to women. I just suck at it. Yeah. But I'm going to get it right one day. Hey, there. I mean, I'm I'm happily married, but I, I still haven't figured them out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And is there uh, are there any spots in Louisville that uh, you and your wife like go to like on a date night or like to hang out with your friends? I mean, because you came yeah. from you came from such a you know a two thousand person town, and now I would assume with all the time you spent there, you have pretty much got to be the mayor of Louisville, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, everybody <laughs> almost knows me here, and it's this is a city of like over a million people. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome which is crazy. I've been here about 12, 12 years, something like that. Um, but no, there, there's a couple of cool places. Like, I mean, obviously go to the movies and things of that nature. Uh, there, there's one restaurant that we go to It's called Havana Rumba. It's Cuban food. And Oh my gosh, it's, it's amazing. So like if, if we ever go out to eat, it's like, that's our first choice. Havana Rumba. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Cause, yeah. Cause they play like the live uh, Cuban music and all that stuff, which is really nice. Uh, and then we also like trying uh, new things as well too. Like there's, uh, I guess you know, there's a lot of uh, vegan restaurants that are opening up yeah. uh, across Louisville, and uh, we've been hitting up some of those just to try them out. Because my wife, she's actually a, a pescatarian. Okay. Uh, oh, that's yeah. Which she, you know, she she eats like fish and eggs every now and then. But other other than that, that's it. Uh, so we like to try, and some of our friends too. Like they're uh, they're vegan, so we'll go and we'll venture out and try some vegan places with them just to just to try it. You mentioned the movies. I, I know you're a huge Star Wars fan. What's your favorite one of all time? Of all time, you, you know, I really like the. Uh, what was the last one that they did? Uh, what, what was the first one that they did? Rogue One of, of the new one. Uh, uh, you talking about seven? You talking seven. about seven? Yeah, seven. Yeah. I, I really like. I really Huge like Star Wars that fan one. right here. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the names of them, uh, but that one was really good because they pretty much just redid that story from the the first one or exactly. the fourth one, however you want to say it. Right. Which was kind of cool. So they did pretty much the same exact story, but it was just with different characters, and there was a different level of you know of difference. But other than that, I really like that story. What character do you relate to most in the uh, Star Wars universe? Oh man, um, I don't know. Well, you. well, I'll tell you what. You think about that for a second. I got the yeah. real Star Wars question. Okay, me and you are sure. roughly almost the same age. So, uh, right. being the fact you're a Star Wars fan. Um, how do you feel about Princess Leia in um, Return of the Jedi wearing that metal mesh swimsuit back in the day? How well, do you I mean, feel as about it? As a kid, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything wrong with it. There was not a damn thing wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let me ask you, do you have any things that you collect? Obviously, you know, you've got some, some hardware from wrestling, some belts, right? But is there anything that you collect, you know, uh, like maybe Funko Pops or Star Wars merchandise? Um, I'm a big, I'm a big, my wife hates it. I'm a big uh, <laughs> uh, Ninja Turtle fan. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Who's your favorite so, one like, then? I have uh, my, uh, Mikey, the party animal. Yeah, there it same is. here, same here. Uh, <laughs> but like, I, I have a game room with like movie theater chairs and all the consoles, you know, from Atari all the way up to uh, the uh, uh, PlayStation Five or Four, excuse me. But, yeah, I was about uh, to say, man, you got a PlayStation Five, man. I need to know your address. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> so I come over. We can play right now. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but no, like I'm, I'm big into like their their new series of uh, comics uh, that's been out for a couple of years. Like those comics are are great, so I collect and read those. Then I also collect some of the uh, uh, some of the action figures as well too, like the like the movie set and and things like that. Okay, so I'm a I'm a I'm a big I'm a big Ninja Turtle fan. So let me ask you this question: then. with the Ninja Turtles in mind, um, have you had a chance to? Uh, read some of the new iterations of Ninja Turtle comics. I know Marvel for a while uh, uh, was doing a couple of the Ninja Turtle comics. Did you get a chance to read any of those? And if so, what did you uh, think? Which ones did they, how long ago was that? Uh, it's probably, probably about like two years ago. Like, you know, you, cause, cause with Ninja Turtles, I mean, there's different companies that, you know, kind of do like a, a big series and cycle through Ninja Turtles and whatnot. So I was just curious to see, cause I mean, I haven't had a chance to really get hands on it, but, uh, you know, most Ninja Turtle fans kind of poke their nose here and there. 
Yeah, I've I've uh, I've only read the series through IDW. Okay. Uh, and that's I don't know if you've looked at that, but that series is amazing. Like it's pretty dark and it stays true to the characters, and it does a lot of throwback too from like the uh, from the '90s Turtles and all that from the cartoons, which is pretty neat. Okay. Um, and then I also kind of like like they you know they did like the Ghostbusters one. And then they did like <laughs> the crossover. Batman, the yeah. Batman one, the crossover one. Yeah, uh, I really, I really enjoyed those as well too. So let me ask another question: Have you ever sang the original Ninja Rap? <laughs> Have I sang it? Have you ever sang the Ninja Rap? <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, I mean, I mean, go, go Ninja, go Ninja, go! I, I, I had that, I had that on cassette. <laughs> me too, me too, me too, yeah. man. <laughs> Oh, man. That's pretty play, awesome. Play, rewind, play, oh, rewind. Oh, man. man. I was met all the time. Did you do the dance and everything where they was kind of doing oh, like, yeah, yeah, oh, you know, man. With the, belt, yeah, the hands and the hands on one yes. side and the other. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I did it all, man. I was so white. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I was doing it too, man. I was doing it too. <laughs> when, you, when you submitted your uh, WWE uh, Tough Enough uh, tape, right behind you was all of your... <laughs> Ninja Turtle characters, oh, right? Yeah, yeah I, did, I did that on purpose. <laughs> did you? Yeah, because I wanted it to look like that was I was I was the uh, the old you know the old child that never left home and still we left, have, lived at home with mom. We have two, right. We have two of those. <laughs> and, and mom's meatloaf is so tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was my wife actually. That's what I was just about to ask you. Just about to ask you. Nice. <laughs> So yeah, because they were like, because me and some of my buddies submitted, like, you know, I'm not going to do a serious one because everyone, everyone's doing serious ones. I'm just going to have fun with it. Just do something stupid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, that's awesome. And yeah. and weirdly enough, you cast your wife as your mom, which which is probably be... some dark fantasy of somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's weird, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. I never thought of it like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, now you're putting that in my head. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm so okay. sorry. <laughs> um and speaking about putting things in your head um al's a friend of the show he did the show mm -hmm. um al's actually one of the people that i respect most he's the one who told me uh if you feel like you want to try wrestling do it as a hobby because you never want to say in the years gone by that i wish i would have tried this and yeah. so you know i really respect him and look up to him is there something that Al was able to give you a piece of advice, something, a life lesson, something that you've taken with you? I'm sure that you get nuggets of wisdom from him all the time, but is there one thing that stands out to you as, you know, as him being your Obi-Wan to your Luke? Uh, yeah, he's, you know, he's Al's, Al, Al, Al's great uh, for OVW, and I'm glad that he took it over because it's good it's going to turn into something something really good but like al he's like you said he's always giving out that advice so it's really hard to pinpoint one thing but if i could pin, uh, pinpoint one thing it would be that he, he always says when you go out there you get, which, whatever you do make it you and make it real you know uh so so that's the one thing that i've I've took from him over the years is just go out there, be yourself, and just make it as real as you can. Uh, you know, he, said, he goes, he always says, when you when you do promos, you know, talk from the heart. Don't pre-plan right. what you're going to say. Just go out there and speak from the heart. Because if you start pre-planning your promos, you know, it's going to sound like that. But if you just go out there and speak, he goes, it'll get across the crowd. He goes. So that that's the one thing is just making it making it real, and that's just something that stuck with me uh, throughout this whole entire time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give us one second. We're just going to pause for one sure. second here. No, as, you're fine. As uh, as as DJ's wife and and little girl come in, <laughs> bearing gifts. So um, and they're they're wonderfully quiet too. I love this. Thank you guys. That's awesome. All right, Simon, go ahead and pick up. So, usually I get the great distinguished pleasure of coming up with a segment of the interview. It is entitled, right. Oh Shit Moment. So this is a segment to where you get an opportunity to tell us the oh shit moment. Now this could be in the ring, outside the ring, in the bathroom a stall. road story. It could be anywhere. So... <laughs> 
be the fact that we are, uh, you know, taping this. If you need some time, that's okay. Our great distinguished colleague, uh, you know, Impact can do that. But give us your best oh shit moment. Best oh shit moment is from that happened to me or somebody else. It could, it could be anybody. In any time where you were like oh shit. Okay, this is this is early in my career. Back back when I was in the Tennessee area with Derek and stuff, we were in a a tag match. I believe it was me and Derek against a couple others. I can't remember who they were, but this one guy, <laughs> something happened in the ring where he took this bump, boom, and then his he wore long tights. His his tights split. Of the crotch, <laughs> from the from the front of the crotch to the back of the crotch, and for some and for some reason he wasn't wearing anything underneath. Oh, oh boy! So oh. when he hit, when he hit, boom, his stuff split, and oh. then he goes, "Oh no!" He said, "My tights ripped or whatever," and I go, "Oh crap!" And I was like, "Okay, we'll cover it up." And I go over and I tag Derek, and I go, "Hey Derek, let's do the leg splitter." <laughs> and, uh, so I tag, and this, this is a house show. This is whether tape for TV or anything. So I tag Derek in, and he comes in. I grab one leg, he grabs the other. We split the leg apart. So all you see is this junk hanging out. <laughs> and then, and then we look down, and then we look at the crowd, and then we spin them around the ring so that way oh, oh, that oh. everybody can see what's going on. Wow! And Whole new we, meaning to moonshine. We, <laughs> and then we did the leg splitter and then he sold out and then we we went home right after that <laughs> damn so awesome so yeah. his so 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 his his gear split and he ended up having ashless chaps almost yeah yeah you could you could see you could see his boys and everything damn out, man. <laughs> that's an oh shit moment God damn. yeah yeah so that's something that i'll never forget it's instilled in my head <laughs> oh my god yeah well i think that was instilled in the head of everyone in the audience at that time um and speaking of instilling things into the audience members heads what have you got going on? Do you have anything uh, coming up uh, wrestling-wise? Do you have anything in terms of websites, uh, following? What can people do to uh, see Tony Gunn and appreciate the legend that is Mr. Shotgun himself? Sure. I'm, um, you know, I'm 100% at Ohio Valley Wrestling. Every Wednesday is our uh, TV tapings, which airs uh, Saturday. And you can now find it on the OVW Wrestling uh, network, which is really cool. Uh, it's only four ninety nine a month, and you get all kinds of content. And you actually get the first two weeks free when you sign up just to check it out. Uh, so you can check out our weekly uh, TV tapings there, along with our Saturday night specials and a lot of other exclusive content. Um, also, too, I do a lot of traveling. I head out to the Pennsylvania area, up to uh, Indianapolis, and actually this weekend I'm headed out to Las Vegas, and I'm bringing <laughs> the OVW heavyweight title with me, and I will be defending it there in Las Vegas on Fremont Street. Awesome. Excellent. Right. Well, yeah, and, the, awesome. and the bad boys are looking to be out there to uh, see you defend that beautiful piece of gold. Um, and maybe... We can uh, stop by a uh, Dunkin' Donuts on our way to the place and uh, introduce you finally to the Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. Hey, yeah, hey um, I'll be more happy to do that. <laughs> How many are you willing to eat? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I might, I might try to bump up to nine or ten, so you guys might bear witness to my new, to my new high number. Yeah, their donuts are a little on the smaller side, so you'd probably kill okay. the dozen. Are they really? Because uh, I, I think the cake donuts are kind of thick. Yeah, they are. Right. <laughs> Compared to Krispy Kreme, uh, Krispy yeah. Kreme is uh, small. They, Tony, we've got a place out on the West Coast called Winchell's Donuts, and they uh -huh. are usually pretty much better than the other two places, but everybody knows Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' Donuts. So, Right. I'll, I'll try whatever, man. All right, all right. Awesome. That sounds like a that sounds like a deal. Um, one <laughs> one quick thing as we're kind of heading home here, um, OVW also Al on the show did uh, kind of let it slip that it looks like um, they're getting accredited uh, by the state to be an actual trade school, and yes. um, that that is wonderful for anyone out there who's looking to you know use the GI Bill or, or some kind of way to pay for their wrestling training and to get rounded training in OVW that's one of the best things about you know the, the uh, what Al's done for the uh, system there 
Do you see yourself down the road when, you know, things are kind of winding down a little bit? Do you see yourself as someone who could be a mentor, um, having learned all this stuff and giving back, you know, and training and maybe seeing yourself in Louisville for, you know, the, the golden years of your life as a, as someone who's, you know, raising the uh, kids in the wrestling industry to be the next superstars. Yeah, that's, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. So actually Al and I, we've, we, we've had a conversation a couple of two or three times about this, probably the last, I would say four or five, six, six months or something uh, about that. Cause you know, I, I had a heart to heart talk with them about, you know, about my passion with wrestling and what I want to do and how I'm always going to be involved with this, whether it's uh, in the ring, you know, helping out production, being a trainer or refereeing or whatever. I just absolutely love this business and I always want to be a part of it. And, you know, I, I kind of talked to him about that and he actually brought up to me, even before this whole uh, trade school thing, that he wanted to bring me on, you know, as a as an intermediate class trainer uh, when this school does uh, officially roll out. So that's something that he's talked to me about and doing. And I think that's something that would be uh, right up my alley. Cause I mean, I've already been teaching uh, for 10 years, you know, in the, you know, in school yeah. and also have a, I have a master's degree as well too. So, you know, I've been working with kids for 10 years and pretty much working with adult wannabe wrestlers is pretty much working with kids. <laughs> Uh, this is so, pretty, pretty true, yeah, no. pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, That's you awesome. know. Speaking of myself, so, but no. But, <laughs> so yeah, I think that that's something that would be right up my alley, and I think that's something that that I would be uh, uh, really good at, and I think Al has you know sees that and notices it, so I think that's why he offered that opportunity to me. And that's brilliant because I don't think many uh, students around will be able to say that. Uh, <laughs> they got to call in sick to uh, Dr. Shotgun for their class tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready for that journey and I'm ready to see what happens there. Uh, but I'm still going to be, you know, wrestling in the process and, and doing what I can. And I do have that opportunity coming up uh, for impact as well yep. down the road too. So awesome. we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Well, Tony, we can um, everyone can check you out on Instagram at Tony B Gun, on your Twitter at Gun underscore t Tony, and then you have YouTube. You can just put in your name Tony Gun, and all of your videos will pop up. So, yeah, we want to thank you for doing this interview with us. It was fun. It was absolutely oh, nice, man. No, it was a blast, guys. I, I love being on here, and I would love, I'd love to do it again sometime down the road. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah man. definitely, man. We appreciate man. that. And maybe, you know. Well, we're, de uh, we're definitely going definitely to have to get those donuts, though, when I come. Play. That's <laughs> right. You I, better I, believe it. I was just about to yep, say yeah. that. And, and, and you know what? Uh, I'll see what I can do with my donut palette and, and maybe uh, do a challenge. Oh, no. Who can eat the oh, most no. donuts? Oh, just, here we go. just don't eat you that know. day. Just don't Jeez. eat that day. That probably might be the way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, We'll see how I feel about an open challenge. We'd, uh, we'd almost have to record this. <laughs> I got a feel, yeah. This yeah. would be awesome. Yeah, we, we, we got have to put it on we'll Facebook put, Live we'll, or we'll, something we'll, like that. You know, we'll put the title. We'll put the title up there and have that on the line. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Right. Oh, dude, Don't that, that would be amazing. <laughs> Don't eat <the> challenge. <laughs> You get awesome. all blown up before your match. Oh, man. <laughs> awesome. Thanks again, Tony. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. Have yourself a good night. All buddy. right. You too, buddy. Oh, man, that was a great interview with Tony. We, yes. We can't say enough about how wonderful it was speaking with Tony Gunn. Yeah. Except for we can because... Uh, that was recorded on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. and uh, he just happened to be coming to Las Vegas to do a little wrestling for uh, yeah. Sin Bodhi and uh, Lucha Libre right. Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and uh, got a little taste of Las Vegas out here. He yeah. had a great time, by the way, if you're in the Vegas area and uh, you got a chance to see him wrestle, that's awesome. Uh, but we got to meet up with him Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and Tony did have Dunkin' Donuts for, for the first time. He did like the Dunkin' Donuts. I had He had eight. <laughs> so I felt I had to have eight. 
Now, the reality of it is I probably could have had more. <laughs> but Tony would have looked at me like, bro, please slow down on the donuts. But he seemed like he really enjoyed them. That was the main thing. In fact, he took he took a box home with him. He took he took the donuts <laughs> for the for Callie, and then uh, you yeah. know just to to give everyone a taste and, yes. and have some on the flight back. And uh, we sat there and we had a, a good conversation for we about did. an hour and a half or yeah, so. Yeah. And uh, we talked a lot about uh, uh, wrestling and uh, life in general. And uh, you know, it's really. Again, when you see people that you respect and uh, you get a chance to uh, get to know them a little bit, yeah, um, it's really great. And I'm I'm urging everyone if you don't know who Tony is, go ahead and subscribe to OVW. Mm-hmm. Get the 4.99 a month, uh, uh, you know, streaming service that they're going to have going. Yeah, uh, they just started it up. Um, a lot of the uh, catalog is going to be on there from you know pretty much when Tony joined. Right. Um, so that stuff's going to be up there. You're going to see this man evolve. Uh, he's been at it for you know such a long time now that he is the veteran now, and yeah. he's he's just a wonderful person and someone who knows the business. And hopefully, you know, everyone will get a taste, and hopefully, we will be seeing him a little bit more on Impact now. That's true. I think it's possible. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you guys again for listening. Uh, Remember, if you're in Las Vegas coming up at the end of the month here in April, you're going to have the Cauliflower Alley Club. Um, Again, it supports a good cause. It's going to be August, or I'm sorry, April 29th, 30th, and uh, May 1st Mm -hmm. at the Gold Coast Casino. Um, please, please, please support if you are in town, support, um, you know, this very good cause that helps wrestlers out who, uh, you know, they can't do it on their own anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And then of course the big one coming up is Starcast at the end of May in conjunction with double or nothing. Yes. We will be at Starcast. So if you are How exciting, if you are in uh, town and going to Starcast, Please check us out. We'll be in the vendors' uh, room, and uh, we'll have some goodies and uh, talk to you guys. And uh, also, please, if you do listen to the podcast, mention us to your friends. Yeah, get the word out there. I mean, here's the thing. I, I don't want to say this too loud because he's not here right now. Right. But Simon Street, he got kids. Yeah, he got kids. More than one. Exactly. Plural. We Four. know we know of two of them. Right. Could that's, be more. I'm not well, I'm that's just saying the whole we know thing. right. There there actually could be about sixteen out there. That's true. So we're not too sure exactly the yeah. amount, but there's a lot of kids out there. All and, I all I've known I've seen a, a bunch of kids holding hands and they look like them. Exactly. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. They look like them. Yeah. It's it's really strange how many, you know kids are out there now that look like him which right. is, i mean they're gorgeous kids right exactly stunning eyes <sighs> you know but the thing is is if you don't support us right then those kids go hungry that's true and you don't want the kids to go hungry look at what happened with sally struthers man and those kids <laughs> in those ethiopia commercials right that's true or africa Good point. Yeah. wherever she was going with that right those kids they were hungry man they were but these kids these are simon's kids these are simon and they need you, man. They're street. They could, they're street kids, literally. That's true. And they could stay on the street if we don't get that support. Exactly. So please, exactly. So um, we're we're asking you out of the bottom of our hearts to please subscribe and download the podcast. Tell your friends. It's free. It is. It's not costing you guys anything. That's right. And and by subscribing and downloading, you are basically saying we're here to help the kids of the street. That's right. And we appreciate it. We do. We do. He's going to appreciate this. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. The things we do for our members. And remember, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and all of your favorite podcast platforms. We are there. Uh, We are currently uh, in the development of the website and the YouTube station. Yes. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of us. We're going to be prominent. And uh, you know what? 
Sometimes you'll see our ugly faces out there. We're going to be a little more descriptive in the future here once we post photos so you know exactly who these people are. Because right now we're just posting photos of ourselves and we forget to put who we actually are. Yeah, I had that talk uh, this past weekend with King Lucky. Yeah, see? And um, I don't know. I don't know what happened, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Because the more love you give to Papa Smark, the more he'll give in return. I wasn't marking out when I told him that, so there's a good chance it didn't happen. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, unfortunately, there are some people in live, and I'm sure all of you out there do know that some people, the best way to talk to them is to just be a mark about things. And be like, you know, like, like literally, if you want to get lucky to, you know, use a pen, you just got to tell them, dude, this pen, this pen was in Japan. It came from Japan. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to I'm going to go one step further. I usually start every conversation with Omega. Oh, yeah. So I'd be like, um, yep. so Omega went to the store. Omega bought chips. Yep. Omega paid two dollars. So every time I say that, it's just this yep. instant it's, like, oh, yeah. my God. I know. You know, and, then, and I have his attention. Yeah. It's amazing. Right. It's amazing. And if you say, you know, uh, anything like if you're like, if Lucky's like, what time is it? And you're like 205. <laughs> like he totally fucking tone, tunes it out. He doesn't hear what you're saying. So, I mean, there are ways to talk to certain people and right. that's definitely a way to talk to him. So, yeah. you know, it's just one of those things, people that we want to give you a little bit more of ourselves. Right. Um, obviously Simon street gave a lot of himself to this world <laughs> because of the kids. That's true. And you know, lucky, you know, he, he's definitely the, the king of Smarksville there. So he's yeah. given to all you guys. And then, um, you're going to get a little sin city, Steve here. A little bit more. Yeah. So um, we're actually kind of not sure what Sin City Steve has got going on there. You know, Kind of suspicious. Any dude with a beard like that is not necessarily the most trustworthy person. That is true. So um, just yeah. remember when you start seeing Sin City Steve's uh, pictures up there and, you know, he starts putting himself out there. Um, it could be with a phone number, and it could possibly be a male prostitute service. I don't know. What sin are you actually in? Uh, it's in the city. Right. We know that for sure. Exactly. So, and huh. I I used to watch Sex in the City. Did you? Yes, Was I did. Was there a lot of sin in it? Well, you know what? There should have been a little bit more sin. <clears throat> but speak, And speaking of sin, yeah. Sin Bodhi. Uh, we're going to give a shout out right now to Sin Bodhi ah. uh, here in Las Vegas, uh, Lucha, Lu- Lucha Libre Las Vegas, uh, the snake pit where you can actually train here in yeah. Las Vegas to be a professional wrestler <laughs> with legends like Jake the Snake Roberts. Okay. I mean, you can't go wrong right there. D'Lo Brown. Right. Huh? That's pretty good. That Kenny is. freaking King. Right. Stop there. I I'm know in. what I'm saying, man. Yes. Um, so, and, and of course, he started Freak Show Wrestling uh, a number of years back. He has got a lot of things going on, and the bad boys, uh, we might be having a little something with them. You never know. You never know. You know, we might be popping up, and we might be popping up uh, very soon locally at uh, one of uh, the local casinos. So keep your ears you and eyes peeled. We'll let you guys know what's going on. So subscribe, subscribe is the bottom line. Exactly. And we love you guys very much. And remember, in this world, you never know when you might not see someone again. So say I love you as many times as possible. It's not wrong to say I love you. That's true. I agree. Mahalo, everyone. Peace. Thank you so much for checking out that video. If you liked what we did there, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new here, slap that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you can be a part of the notification squad. Follow us on social media, at Vegas Bad Boys with a Z, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And until next time, we will see you in the next video.